scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Just lift your voice one more time and say, Lord, give me an encounter tonight. Koinonia is a place of supernatural encounters. Please be serious as you pray. Lord, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe in your power. I believe in your power. I believe in the presence of your spirit. From everlasting, everlasting to everlasting, I will praise Him. Everlasting to everlasting, I will praise You. Oh, wave your hands to the King of Kings, Lord. I Lift your hands, praise him. Lord, I will praise you. Everlasting. Oh, yeah.
Lost the voices. Just worship him, this is part of the meeting. You are worthy, Lord.
Spirit of the Living God, we thank you. You have anointed this place to be a place of encounter. A place where the veil is torn from the eyes of men. We thank you for your power. The power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your name. The name of Jesus in this place. And its power to change. If you are sick in your body, just lay your hands. Lay your hands anywhere there is any sickness right now. Please lay your hands. I want to rebuke the spirit of infirmity. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command that devil of infirmity to leave every sick body right now. Leave every sick body right now. Leave every sick body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command my grain to be healed right now. The power of God is touching people, healing people from my grain. My grain headache is being healed right now. My grain headache. I see severe menstrual pain, severe menstrual condition being healed by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is healing people right now in this place there's someone you have a problem with your left ear i see pain there you feel like fire coming upon you there the lord is healing that left ear right now the lord is healing that left ear right now that left ear right now in the name of jesus christ there's someone with a chest condition very severe pain around your chest that heaviness is being lifted right now in the name of Jesus, that heaviness. There's a lady with one of your molars, severe pain in one of your molars. That pain disappears right now. Right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That pain disappears right now. There's someone you've been having pain around your ankle. Looks like um, your ankle region, your left leg. Right now the power of God is touching that ankle. Be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now in the name of Jesus hotness of the body I see at least seven people with this condition unusual heat around your body in the name of Jesus the power of God is touching you wherever you are right now and giving you a miracle because his presence is in this place he's giving you a miracle he's giving you a miracle There's a gentleman, you came here, you've been falling sick recurrently. Um, you've treated typhoid again and again, but you've been falling sick recurrently. The power of God is healing you right now. Right now, from that pain, that pain, there is a little baby that is being healed right now of fever. Very little child being healed of fever. I'm seeing someone with a boil in your armpit. It's, it's been painful. This is, this is a serious boil. I mean your left, this is my left, your left side. The power of God is touching that boil right now. Not only will it be healed, let it disappear from your body, vanish and go away right now. Hallelujah. There's a lady, you have an infection. This is a very terrible infection because this is something that has been healed again and again. The Lord is touching a lady right now. That devil is going. No matter how you treat it, it keeps coming back. It's of the devil and it's from the pit of hell. This is a place of encounter. This is a place of liberty. I release the power of God into that body right now. Consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence it fills this room consuming fire sweet perfume your awesome presence it fills this room for this is holy ground. This is holy ground. 
Take the glory tonight. Bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated if you can. God bless you. Amen and amen and amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It's always important to discern atmospheres because there are graces that are given to men, to ministries. And every time you come under those atmospheres, the graces are authorized to speak. So when you discern the graces that are available in atmospheres, you will know how to take advantage of that grace and enjoy certain blessings and certain privileges. Um, we have to run tonight. We have a lot to do. I trust that tonight's teaching will challenge us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. By the way, let me commend everyone. It's been quite, maybe three weeks of a real busy. It's been very busy for us all. The fasting and prayer and then the miracle service. I really want to commend everybody for your loyalty, your participation. The Lord will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight the Lord has laid in my spirit. I'll be teaching tonight and we'll be building on it next week. And uh, let's see how far the Lord will take us. A very important subject that concerns the body of Christ. Now please look up. I hope you know that part of the indices for measuring spiritual growth, aside from your conformity to the image of the Christ is understanding the systems of the kingdom. Everyone says systems. Understanding the ways and the operation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. You are only growing spiritually when two things happen to you. Number one, you are experientially coming into conformity. You are becoming like Christ in reality. It's a progressive manifestation, but it should be an evident one. Number two, you are learning the ways of the kingdom, the operation of the kingdom. You are getting to know the Lord and having an encounter with him and bearing fruit. And um, I'm going to be talking about a subject that I believe is important to the body of Christ. And by the way, we honor all our followers online. May the Lord bless you. Open up your spirit. There's no barrier in the spirit. There's no distance in the spirit. The Lord will bless and honor you in Jesus name. John 17. Let's look at the prayer of Jesus. <clears throat> let's start off from there. John chapter 17. We'll read from verse 13 down to 21. There's just one verse but let me just lay a foundation even as we build. Let your heart be open. It's not only important to hear the word of God. You must always be in a position to receive it. As many as receive him, he gave them power. The power is given only to those who receive. Hallelujah. John 17 verse 13. And now this is Jesus praying, by the way. Jesus is praying, talking to his father. Um, he was shortly to depart to begin his passion, the activities that led him to the cross. And now he's praying, verse 13. And now come I to thee. Please listen. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. 14. We'll run down till 21. I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as I am not of the world. 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. This is a message on its own. We can dwell for weeks here just trying to unravel this mystery. This is Jesus praying. But that thou shouldest keep us them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also send them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself. 
that they might also be sanctified through the truth 20 now listen neither pray i for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their words say jesus prayed for me or say jesus prayed for me when he was praying this prayer he added you to the list he said i'm not just praying for these immediate disciples but there are many who will receive and believe and come into the truth as a result of their word 21 is my verse of emphasis he says that they may be one as thou father art in me and i in thee that they may also be one in us why to the end that the world may believe that thou sent me everybody say that they may be one i'm really speaking passionately to the body of christ tonight and this concerns every one of us because we're part of it i want to challenge one of the things the bible says the fivefold ministry was supposed to address when you read ephesians the fourth chapter beginning from verse 10 the bible says when he led captivity captive he went down to hell and the bible records that he gave gifts to men are we together now he said he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and all of that and then he says he gave this fivefold for certain things for the equipping perfecting maturing of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry what's the work of the ministry kingdom advancement right then it says that we all together will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ so it is god's desire that such a thing will exist in the body of christ called the unity of the faith hallelujah the unity of the faith a level of oneness in the spirit that the church will have one voice that when we speak creation human beings government systems will acknowledge that which we are communicating because the church has come through the fivefold ministry to a point of alignment where our voice becomes one are we together now one of the chiefest of all the arsenals of darkness in destroying the church is the proposition that 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 mindset that has been injected into the church that makes the pursuit of god look as though it was a personal revelation that was given to just a person as though god is not interested in the corporate growth of the body are we together now so we have individuals coming with revelations and that's supposed to be the program of god that's how it comes it comes through a person but it is for a people are we together now and this this strategy by darkness has destroyed the body of christ because we have not been able to attain onto that point of unity maturity and perfection it's been a mighty tool that satan has used and so in the next two or three weeks we are going to be examining the concept of of uh, this statement that they may be one the concept of the unity of the faith but to start off tonight i want to um take on you would call it a subtopic i call it three great errors three great errors i will sing of the wonders of your word i will seek out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise yes we will forever sing your praise give us revelation tonight in the name 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 25. Let's start off from there. Three great errors that I believe has caused havoc in the body of Christ has sabotaged the spiritual progress of many believers, many ministries, many well-meaning people who love the Lord and desire the pursuit of godliness. Exodus 25 and verse 40. This was the construction of the tabernacle media. You need to help us very, very fast um, today. Hallelujah. i like us to read together. One, to read. And look that thou make them after what? Their pattern which was showed thee in the mount. If you can have amplified, that would be great. Hallelujah. It says that you ensure that everything that is done to make up that temple is done according to pattern. Listen, when it comes to spiritual progress and spiritual advancement, the believer is not left to his options to guess his way and choose his method of spiritual growth and his method of understanding God. Are we together? That degree of autonomy is not given to the believer. There is a pattern. There is a pathway. There is a system with which God desires to be known. And you cannot create your own pathway to the knowledge of God. Several people have gotten into error in an attempt to create different pathways to accessing God, but there is a system. It's consistent with the character of God that every time God gives you an assignment or wants to show you a dimension of himself, he shows you how you will walk into it. In this instance, he revealed to Moses, I want to build a tabernacle, but there are specifics. It was on account of that that the hand of the Lord came upon Bezalel and released upon him the spirit of creativity and craftsmanship. And here God is giving a warning again. He's saying, make sure under no circumstance should you become emotional about this building of the temple. Do not get to a point where you pity the people so much that you say, no, no, no. Instead of using gold, gold is not available. It will take us a long time to go and, uh, and, and source for it and smelt the gold and all of that. Let's just manage this. God is saying, when it comes to this, you keep emotions and sentiments. There is a prescribed pathway. Are we together? It's amazing how many people attempt to cultivate formulas and methods and all kinds of ways that they believe will lead to Christ. That's why Jesus ended that confusion once and for all. He said, I am the way. I lead you to the truth and I give you life. Hallelujah. The concept of patterns is something that has intrigued me personally in my work with God. Ministries have failed because they have ignored the patterns of God. Families have failed because they have ignored the patterns of God. Listen, everybody say spiritual patterns. Say it, spiritual patterns. There is a prescribed formula for doing anything in this kingdom. Hallelujah. There is a spiritual formula for being a father. The only way you can become an effective father in the kingdom is to subscribe to that formula. When you guess your own method, it has severe side effects. There is a pattern to become blessed and wealthy in the kingdom. You guess your own pattern or listen to the garbages that are marketed around, there will be a side effect. Let me tell you something. You see the failure of governments across territories from Nigeria to other parts of the country is a result of our guessing different pathways of managing the earth. When God designed man, he gave a pattern. Are we together now? Our refusal to pay attention to the patterns of God is what is responsible for many tragic events in families. When you see a family, for instance, where it is the mother who is fending for the children 
and the father is there crossing his leg doing nothing for instance that is a violation of the patterns of god and the bible says whosoever breaks the hedge please pay attention the serpent is authorized to strike so your only basis of fortification in the kingdom is your subscription your alignment to divine patterns concerning every matter hallelujah now we live in a world there is no time in modern history where we have a beehive of arrogant people living and walking upon the face of the earth everyone with his own um self-exaltation we pride ourselves in intellectual accomplishments we pride ourselves in our social status and all kinds of things and these false accolades have brought us to a point where we believe we can be god outside of the christ you see let me tell you something when the new testament believer derives the relevance of his entire work in christ any activity at all you try to initiate that is outside of the authority the supervision and the jurisdiction of the christ is error is disalignment and is apostasy a deviation from god's patterns are we together now there is a pattern for everything in life when god anoints you and calls you into ministry there is a pattern when god anoints you and calls you into leadership there is a pattern now the trouble there is we receive the call and choose our pattern are we together now think how many times the people in the bible refused to move until god told them how to do it moses is standing before the red sea and he knows the red sea can part he knows there is a provision in the might of god to deal with that situation now moses as a person did not know how it will happen but one thing is that in the multifaceted dimension of god's wisdom there is a provision for dealing with that predicament are we together now and so moses had to pay attention to stay with god and god spoke to him in exodus 14 tell the people to move forward stretch your rod part that sea with it when they got to jordan you would think it was the same instruction given to moses but joshua had to wait to receive another pattern on how to part the same sea you went for a meeting and the lord told you let everybody lift his hands then you go for another one and assume if god said everybody lift his hands that's what he's saying now and he said everybody lift your hands and nothing happens and he said lord what is this and he says i'm a god of patterns is god speaking to us there were times when the nation of israel were told to stand still don't do anything god will fight for you hold your peace there were times he said prepare for war you are going to fight patterns our inability to understand listen please i pray that god will open your eyes this is not even where i'm going to when the bible says all things are possible let me explain to you what that means in god's multifaceted wisdom there is a solution for everything only if you can wait until you receive the blueprint for addressing that current condition are we together now the bible is a compendium of spiritual patterns how god approaches things in life his methodology his approach to the issues of life god's pattern is that listen if you do not have love for instance even your faith works by love that's god's pattern god's pattern of prosperity is that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty the world has their pattern cheat loot kill hoard resources 
Are we together now? The world prides itself in achievement. In the kingdom, it is God that gives men the power to get well. There are patterns. Our cultures have their patterns. For instance, they tell you when you get married, beat your wife in such a way that she will understand the possibilities that are in you. Then start treating her well. Are we together now? So that if at any point she wants to trivialize your masculinity, the memory of what had happened will put her into order. That's a world's pattern. But God says, uh -uh. wives submit. Husbands love your wives. And he didn't leave you to love the way you like. He said, as Christ loved the church. Are we together now? Let me tell you something, dear. Our lives are largely a consistent activity of violating kingdom patterns. Consistently. In God's kingdom, if you want to be great, you must be humble. In the world system, you try to, like a political party, you try to gather together loyalists who will exalt you. But here's how we, are, we rise in the kingdom. If I be lifted up, not if you, I will draw all men. Are we together now? Divine patterns. Let me show you one more scripture. And then we'll begin to talk about the errors. Ezekiel 43. When I found this, this was, this was powerful. I mean, it blessed me. Ezekiel 43 from verse 7 to 12. Ezekiel 43. Is God blessing us already? There are divine patterns. Ezekiel 43, 7 to 12. It says, And he the Lord said unto me, Son of man, listen. He said, This is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever. He said, And my holy name, the house of Israel, shall be no more profane. Neither they nor their kings by their idolatrous halotry nor by the dead bodies and monuments of their kings. Verse 8. Nor by setting their threshold and so on and so forth. Let's go to 9. Listen. He said, now let them put away their idolatrous hollow tree and the dead bodies and monument of their kings far from me and I will dwell in their midst forever. 10. Son of man. Listen. He said, show the temple by your description of it. To the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquity that they may see how much they have deviated from my ordinances and my patterns he says and let them measure accurately its appearance and plan next verse and if they are ashamed of all that they have done make known unto them the form of the temple and the arrangement of it this was a prophetic language He's speaking prophecy here. It exists and its entrance and the whole form of it and its ordinances and all its forms and all its laws and write it down in their sight so that they may keep the whole form of it and all the ordinances of it and do them. He said, look, 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 look. These guys are guessing around. They are guessing. The reason why my presence is not made manifest is that there is a specific spiritual pattern like like an organogram that if done well will give me space to find expression when when balaam was called by balak to go and curse the nation of israel when he got to the mountain the bible says he saw that there was a spiritual formation are we together now the nation of Israel were arranged according to their tribes with the ark of God being at the center. That was a pattern that was given. And he looked and he said, ah, these people are blessed. I cannot curse them. He tried to curse them, but the dexterity of the pattern refused the curse from coming out. Are we together now? He that breaks the hedge, he that violates the pattern, the serpent not may strike the serpent is waiting at the mercy of your alignment waiting for your disalignment to authorize his operations he said tell them I want you to give them the dimensions 
because you see a man when you read the new testament the bible tells us that we are we are temples temples and so in the similitude of this that was revealed to prophet ezekiel he's saying there are dimensions there are patterns listen this spiritual alignment works like magic look at me please look at me i want to talk to you honestly brothers and sisters you may never know to what degree your alignment can authorize the activities of heaven around your life elijah the prophet understood divine patterns when it was time to call the presence of god he didn't roam around guessing his options he said bring me 12 stones because he was operating with the god of the covenant bring me 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of israel he put a sacrifice upon it he said bring me water and there was blood upon it and he called down the god of heaven and god came instantly are we together now the patterns of god there has been largely a deviation from god's pattern you see when you look at a life that after prayer after fasting you lay hands on the person four gallons of oil and the person does not change and there is no breakthrough let me tell you among other reasons that person is in by default living in disalignment to the ordinances and the patterns of the kingdom let me tell you something please come you see ba if this guy has a spirit manipulating him whereas by default his heart is stayed on violating the truths and the principles of the kingdom no matter what kind of deliverance i do the devil will only be playing caricature and mockery with him are we together now because the devil knows that the edge is broken he can find expression we see this in the book of job satan came to job and found out that the hedge was closed and he went back to god and said allow me allow me to be able to penetrate and find expression so i can pray for this guy and lay hands on him are we together now but he will go back into consistently violating the patterns of god the pattern of god you see someone sent me a text thank you someone sent me a text today and said um said i'm tired of my life i don't even know what is happening in our family man of god i believe one word from you would change our financial situation and i say it's not true no i wish listen i i can prophesy and it can bring breakthrough but that breakthrough is like pouring water in a basket there is a pattern that authorizes that breakthrough to leave the family are we together one they are not honoring the lord with their time no no no, no let's even leave honoring the lord with their time number one their hearts like the macedonians are not even with god it says they draw nigh to me with their mouth their lips but their hearts are far away from me are we together now tithing is zero even when it is zero even when it is there is a bribe they walk up to god with anger and resentment spend everything and calculate what they spent later on and now say i spent ten thousand okay god how much do i even have two thousand okay take one thousand this is your tithe that kind of attitude will keep that man in poverty and then to talk of other principles you do nothing you get nothing are we together that idea of something for nothing is an illusion it's nonsense so that man is violating this pattern and when he comes for miracle service in his mind he's thinking oh god let this guy call me and prophesy to me and say your level is changing and all through the preaching time he's impatient he's just waiting for where we say rise up on your feet because to him he believes every other thing i'm saying is nonsense this man you are happy there's water in front of your table that's why you don't know what is wrong with me listen it is because of this that we have very little appetite to stay with the word 
and understand the principles of the spirit and one of the errors that is even coming to the body of Christ right now is the replacement supposedly to replace the word ministry with what we know as prayer ministry just follow me I have something for you tonight. are we together now and so it is good to pray but many people convince themselves and think because I am praying look I know so many ignorant prayer warriors who, whose lives is not producing any result. Their frustration is to the roof because they want to replace one kingdom truth with another. Are we together now? We just finished seven days prayer and fasting. But there are, there are patterns there are principles that you must learn. Listen, please pay attention to what I'm saying. If you are still guessing your life, you are going to be in trouble. Please come here, Jimmy. Let me use two people. Benga, come. Uh, who promised, come. Let me just use these three people. Come, sir. Now, watch this. These are great men of God. These are three great, mighty people. Listen. If I give all of them a mic and I say in five minutes, I, I'm not going to do that, just an example. I say, Ejimi, what is the key to the blessing in the kingdom? Maybe that's the question he has to ask you. Can you stand up and articulate the same way I look at you and I say, how do you make jollof rice? I say, Abba, get a pen and paper get one cup of water go and buy this and that add onion don't put it too early do this and that all of those rules are we together now i come to benga and i say how is it is there a possibility that a man can walk in divine health oh yes the bible says it by his stripes we are healed are you living in it no that means something is wrong and the problem is never from god can he teach you and guide you as though giving you a formula are we together now number three i meet promise and i say promise can favor work in my life every day and every time is there such a reality in a man's work with god that based on an understanding and an anointing that comes upon your life you can walk in favor i can call one more person and say can you show us the path of advancement and progress in the spirit? Can you teach me what to do such that after 10 years, I'm still moving forward regardless of what happens? Everyone say patterns. Please look at me, brothers and sisters. Your spiritual growth is not all about getting revelations you do not understand. It's about understanding the construction you have to know how the kingdom is built the systems of god's kingdom to master the laws with which you will use to command results in this territory otherwise no matter what else you do it's only a matter of time you'll be frustrated i guarantee you you can jump around and act like you are moving forward 10 years down the line because this is why you find out that so many people, this guy starts well, after three or five children, he's angry. He cannot remember the message he preached 10 years ago because he only prepared it for preaching. He preached it powerfully, but that truth has not been seated in him. What do you know? Which pattern of the kingdom do you understand that brings you at peace with creation? If somebody looks at you now and says, Mama, I'm going to a herbalist tonight. And I assure you, you see this fowl that I'm holding in my hand is for you. We are going to kill you this night. I want to ask you a question, Koinonia. What will you do? I know what many of you will do. You will call me. Or you will call Benga or any of the leaders. <laughs> Apostle, Somebody is, is daring. I'm a member of Koinonia. That's why you stay first. You see, let me tell you. Look up, look up. Listen. 
if this is how it continues becoming i'm not helping you i'm only it's like a musician coming for a show that's what is happening the goal of these teachings all the time is not to make you keep saying my this guy is an anointed man of god no there is something that is supposed to be transferred to you are we together like a button at a point you should be able to hold it that which we have seen that which we have heard now you handle it and you can go places with it i know it i know how this thing works somebody looks at you and say you are a failure continue praying in tongues and you laugh and say no i'm not just a tongue talker i know the patterns of god i understand it listen i don't care what you are doing that you are calling spiritual growth if you are not understanding the patterns of the kingdom the days that will come will frustrate your christian experience look at what is happening for instance in the economy now 1200 naira or there about one gallon of oil. now the reality is that that's that's very painful but have you got the light that shines in the night in the midst of this cry some people have never had it this good what is responsible for it are we together there seems to be a time when a spirit comes upon the body of christ and people start getting lukewarm and cold even preachers i sometimes i really find it funny a man of god comes on stage and says look uh we're going to just review what we have been teaching because he's stranded he has not mastered the key to continuous growth in the spirit and so he has exhausted every message four months into the year he's tired and then he comes and says well um why are you looking at me like that it's not like i didn't prepare i've been busy you think ministries and then he starts venting his anger because he has gassed out he does not know that there is a formula in the spirit that can keep men on fire 24 hours believe me when i say this that when people are drowning spiritually right a man who used to walk in miracles and power five years ago five years later is, is barely trying to pray for headache something happened his inability to understand how to sustain the anointing is drying him up are we together now please look at me what you do not know in the kingdom should be your pursuit at this point that's how to grow you don't just open your devotional and say today let me read second kings i've not read kings in a long time you are not growing you are convincing yourself that because others are seeing you read the bible then when you finish you just walk around pray for two hours in tongues just stroll around and ba -ba 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 -ba, one hour ba -ba -ba, two, two hours and you just say oh that's enough i'm growing you are not growing believe me you are not growing it's just religion because your life and the lack of spiritual evidence will show that there is no progress bless you guys please i'd like you to pray in one minute and say lord make my growth constructive pray inside and outside and all those following us online pray lord make my growth constructive i'm tired of comparing myself with people and convincing myself that i'm growing whereas i am not growing the difference between a general and one who just entered the army is is access to mysteries access to patterns he understands the art of war he knows what to do he knows how to put fear in his opponent and the enemy spiritual growth is not haphazard you can lay hold on eternal life you can lay hold on the precepts of the kingdom if that is not happening no matter how you convince yourself you are not growing listen please look at me to grow spiritually is not to know how to preach there are many people who have studied homiletics and they know nothing about spiritual growth to grow spiritually is not to get to the point where you can now start writing books look even an unbeliever is smart enough you can go online what does it take 
intellectually speaking to prepare a nice sermon if i tell you to preach on faith are you so daft that you cannot go and get messages on faith and listen to one and get some things and look at one or two scriptures remove some things you don't believe and just arrange it and come and stand and say okay we are preaching on faith and deliver an intelligent message and at the end somebody is saying this is amazing i've never had this i thought the greek word was pistis now you are bringing another word wow and then you leave with envelope and believe that that envelope is a sign it's an authorization that you are making progress then they will invite you for another meeting are we together you see how the deception grows they now say oh ebenezer please there's one small prayer meeting i don't know if you can just come and bless us you are the one who you believe you are growing so you are coming on let's all pray one hour two hours three hours you pray spiritually here and there they start calling you for little counseling and say i'm making progress believe me if those are the indices you are using for progress you know why i'm saying this a time will come your life will become clear that you are not growing and you have to find ways of explaining to people first and foremost why you are not growing to grow spiritually is not the ability to sing spiritual songs alone that's important that you stand on stage and raise a song a popular song that we know in the body of christ or writing songs no it's not a sign that you're spiritual your degree of alignment to patterns look at me brothers and sisters it is on the strength of that alignment you can look at people and stretch your hands and say my god bless you and that encounter will produce more results to them than long grammar of nonsense that cannot be proved everybody say i want results in my life please say it i want results in my life this is why regardless of how spiritual we think we are the people in our environment subconsciously they are not impressed and they are not convinced because it is barren of the ability to deliver if your life is producing result i assure you your praying in tongues will not interrupt anybody. Nobody will say, stop shouting, Jare, it's too much. No, they are shouting because they are comparing that shout for three hours every day at the back of their window. Eight o'clock you are at it. Is it wrong? No. But that you are believing that just that in itself, on its own, please believe me. You see, Ba, I may not I may not claim to understand certain aspects in the kingdom but brothers and sisters when it comes to the presence of God and the operation of the kingdom I know what I'm saying there is a way a man walks with God that God will make your life a wonder there is a way a man thinks he is walking with God and at the end it looks like God is a wicked God I counsel people all the time after years of spiritual activities they return back with frustration and they say apostle I can't understand I'm the prayer leader in my group I love God every time we organize crusades maybe in a, a place our village at the end of the year I can't understand why is God this unfair to me is this is this how my life will be I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me and believe me when I tell you God is a good God something about our not understanding his ways is responsible the inability to understand the patterns of god and you see that's why many pastors have to be careful a whole territory can be disaligned because of an ideology that comes from a pastor especially here in the north because we are very religious people we are sincere people who are religious 
So a pastor comes on stage and for 10 years, he's teaching people something that is an error with such authority and audacity. They give birth to their children and their grandchildren and they say, this is the way. And when the child is saying, daddy, I think it's this, they say, I will, I will slap you, it's been this way. Have you gotten results through it? Don't question God. It's only God that knows what he's doing. Let's just keep on. No, no, no. Everybody shout, no way. There is a way. Growing up, I saw many things. Well-meaning people who said all kinds of things about God. This is how we mock ourselves. Lion of the tribe of Judah. Everybody clap for Jesus. They clap. Say, no, no, no. This is not for my Jesus. And God is saying, do you really know me? All these things you are doing. Look how many frustrated people in the body of Christ. Look how many people are sick in the body of Christ. As if divine healing is a lie. That's why when you come and you are preaching and say there is a possibility in God to bring you healing, they are just watching you. It's when they hear somebody just shout, ah, 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 under the anointing, everybody say, ah, there's power in this place, so let's pay attention to what this person is saying. It's terrible. Look at what is happening to our families. Brothers and sisters, are you not concerned that our spirituality is not matching up with the faithfulness of God and the goodness of God as claimed by him himself? I tell you where the problem is. It's uncomfortably true, but we must admit it. Our inability to understand his patterns. God is a loving God, but he's not an emotional God. If he were an emotional God, the cry of many people would bring them out of hell. I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. Yes, I will worship you forever, love you forever, because this God is too good. I have watched the lives of people, even in Koinonia here, I've watched the lives of people when they came for Koinonia with their beliefs, with their understandings about God and they chose to receive the word of God foolishly, childlikely and watch what has happened in their lives. Hallelujah. Patterns. Let's go to three great errors. I don't want to just dwell here but I mean I can stay here all night and challenge you. I took a study towards the end of last year on God's generals afresh. I've studied them so many times. So many times. But I took I took another study recently. And it was as though I had never studied them. I remember crying almost for two, three hours in the night and say, Lord, what nonsense is this? How come we lost touch with spiritual reality? No symbol to charge the atmosphere for them. No worship song as we know, dancing around. But these people came with sincerity. And they activated possibilities in the lives of people. Those guys had results. Hundred people could come sick and up to 95 can live healed. Verified, not this our thing that we're not even sure whether we're healed. Very sure that they are healed. And the Lord reiterated it to me again. Son, I will not bend to your pattern. It was when the prodigal son got up and said, I will arise. The father wanted him, but the father would not just get up and roam around. The son said, ah, ah, he thought to himself, I have disaligned out of pattern. When I was under the authority there, I lacked nothing. I wanted self-sufficiency. It drove me out into lack. Now I'm eating with pigs. Question, did his eating with pigs reduce the wealth of his father? Did any demon advise him? No. No. He said, I will arise. Let me tell you, some things are not demonic. It is within your power to be angry and say it must stop from today. 
I will arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I'm not even worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your servants. And the Bible says, afar off, while he was yet coming, the father saw him and ran to him. And ran to him. I am passionate about seeking to understand the patterns of God. Our generation is not in ignorance. Technology has opened us up to a vast array of possibilities. I watch believers now and I'm telling you with all sincerity, the way many people are seeking God is not how I sought God. I sought God seriously. You don't even see anybody say, okay, let me get a concordance. They don't need it. I remember times when we sit down, we'll be asking questions. Ah, Jesus went to hell and preached a message. First Peter said so and we're verifying right now. Believers don't say, they sit down, gist and talk nonsense. Then when it's time for prayer, everybody say, let's pray. Begin to pray, everybody begin to move around. And we move around as if we are making a fool out of ourselves. Listen, let me talk to you. I have a responsibility to teach you truth. If I did not have the results in my life, you will say I'm deceiving you. Are we together now? Many people call upon God and it looks like he cannot answer. And then we keep creating theologies to explain this. Brothers and sisters, he can be heard. There is a disalignment. We need to return. So pastor said, God is not a God of crowd. He's a God of what then? God so loved the world. Not God so loved Israel. God is not a God of crowd. I desire that no man perish. Prosperity is not the most important thing. That is needed in your life. You don't need any anointing. Don't no nothing. No, the, the most important thing. If you have Jesus, you have everything. It looks like a very nice message. Believe it and see what it will do to you. It will destroy your life. That's what has happened. Let me tell you. Do you know any spiritual message can make you feel guilty? And so it is out of guilt you will believe it. People just say, "I hope you know." There's nothing in this life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you just feel guilty and say, "Ah." That book of financial intelligence I bought. Let me just throw it because the way this guy is talking. Three errors. Let me talk about it. Error number one that has ravaged the body of Christ is the error of apostasy. Please write it down. Apostasy. Open up your spirit now. The Lord will bless you. Apostasy. What is apostasy? A departure from the known patterns of God. A departure, a derailing from the principles of God. The name is apostasy. Two scriptures very quickly. First Timothy, please, chapter 4, verse 1. First Timothy 4, verse 1. Apostasy. The first error in the body of Christ is that we have a people who are hell-bent on teaching nonsense and rubbish without finding out if what they are communicating is in line with God's pattern. It says, but the Holy Spirit, listen, distinctively and expressly declares that what will happen in the latter times, some will turn away, not backslide, turn away completely from the faith. It says, giving attention to what? Deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Who teaches it? There are doctrines in the body of Christ that are doctrines of demons. And when I say doctrines of demons, don't just think the modern church. Ancient and modern, all. There are doctrines of demons that are older than us. They subtly came. They look spiritual. Satan always uses it is written apostasy a deviation from the truth listen please look up the first operation of demons in the life of a man is deception to cause a man to err to manipulate truth see deception does not have to be a lie a manipulated truth is also deception I can take truth out of his context 
and preach. You see, I've shared with us again and again that this Bible is a prophetic book. Please listen to me, brothers and sisters. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach anything you want to hear. There are native doctors that when you enter their shrine, you see Bible. Does that mean they are of God? You know it's a native doctor. But you enter, you can see all other religious books. And then he adds the Bible. He can even say, let's, before I even pray, before we cut this chicken, turn to Psalm, Psalm 5. Now you are reading, listen, you are reading the Bible. I say, ah, Psalm 5, this guy, this guy is making sense. Ah, I'm, I did, say, ah, yeah, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a traditionalist, but my own is different. Apostasy, a deviation from truth. There are people who have prophesied things to people that did not come from God. They had something, but it was not the spirit of God. And they misled people. Every manifestation of prophecy that is not in sync with the patterns of God is witchcraft. Whether the operator of it is aware or not, the operator may be innocent, but it does not justify the operation. Are we together now? How many marriages have broken in the church because somebody got up and said, ah, um, I don't know what is, I'm seeing. Martha, leave your husband because as I'm looking at you now, I'm seeing that um, there is a spirit. And they we can't even tell you the name of the spirit. The name of the spirit is A and B and C. Pastors have left wives People are beating people. Parents have disowned children. They have called innocent people, mommy water. If somebody who is in his right senses was born, he has birth certificate from the hospital. You now say the person came all the way from the river and all sorts of things. Now listen, I'm not laughing. I'm serious because I'm going to balance it. There are many people who have carried the illusion right now. They walk around saying I'm a witch. He said, who told you? He said, a man of God. That's why I came for miracle service. They said, I am a witch. The man of God has never paid attention to find out what the Bible calls a witch. What is the condition from scripture to be called a witch or a wizard? Are we together now? And this has misled people. How about looking at a lady and vowing that you are going to marry a guy his name is Benga. He likes keeping Malu. He will sit down by your left. If you don't marry this guy, your life is finished. And for 10 years, that lady is roaming around Nigeria looking for Benga. Moving all around. We've discussed this under challenging discussions on late marriage. There is a balance to it because there are times that it is true. See, when truth, notice when truth is manipulated it becomes witchcraft apostasy so many people have been confused today because of wrong teachings let me tell you other wrong teachings so you don't think that maybe i'm challenging people that rubbish demonic teaching that came from the pit of hell please look up came from the pit of hell that the anointing is not important the most important thing is that Jesus is Lord of your life and you are heaven bound. That's a doctrine of demons. It's popular. It's taught by conservatives, but it's still demonic. Money is the root of all evil. Doctrines of demons. It came from the pit of hell. By sincere people, well-meaning. Don't confuse. I'm not saying those who brought it are demonic. It is devilish and it is terrible. Because men have absorbed it and it has produced nonsense in their lives other doctrines prayer is not important you hear people say that kind of thing prayer is not important they even laugh and mock and everything and you see some people pray bah, 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 and the congregation is laughing and demons are saying we like we like this congregation he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint another doctrine of demon once demons once you are praying and you don't have any business with the word just pray it's still the same thing. Are we together now? There are all kinds of episodes of lies sugar-coated with a little truth here and there that is deceiving and misleading the body of Christ. Apostasy. 
a deviation from the truth. Men of God have advised themselves on different ways to raise money and run church projects. Some of these ways of raising money, I, I say it, you know that I love the body of Christ, but I must say it. We think it's nice, we think it's marketable, but some of these things were advices that were given by business people who received their inspiration on the seat of yoga it was under strong transcendental meditations they received some of this formula and then we watch their videos on youtube and say wow so this is how you raise money in the church and then you now come and we apply all kinds of things now the man may be genuinely anointed but there is a mix an aberration it's called apostasy a deviation from the truth some of us right now you have believed something that is not of God. And that's what has authorized Satan. Regardless of your prayer, he still finds expression in your life. There are people who believe you can have 10 girlfriends. It doesn't matter. The most important thing is marry one. They even tell themselves. It looks nice. And they say, man of God, I have like 10 guys. The last guy just came two weeks ago. Just can you help me? Which one do you think will be a nice guy? because a doctrine was marketed to you are we together another the latest of the dangerous apostasies that are coming is an imbalance of the concept of fatherhood and mentorship that is bringing is making men in the body of christ demigods are we together now usurping authority not just spiritual guidance but literally holding the keys of the lives and destinies of other people the disadvantage being a cause or a threat and all sorts of things there is a place for that but i've always found that such imbalances that have destroyed the body of christ so we have offshoots of these kinds of things people who kneel down and hands up in church churches where they flog people oh you are not aware of it it has happened to some of you that's why you are quiet you are just looking because it has happened Listen, I don't say this in a cynical way. I came with my heart to pour it out. This apostasy. Jesus prayed a prayer. He said that they may be one. They will cut away from all these things and stand in a point of strength. Doctrines of devils. Right now there are all kinds of strange demonic ministerial associations. Are we together now? If you want to rise... You have to come into it's almost like a cabal like a cult you never rise until you subscribe to certain occultic things and at extreme levels at least it's not strange in the body of christ we know that there are all kinds of occultic societies how many men of god have been caught with drugs at airports customs grounded them right do you think the man of God started selling drugs like that? He started innocently. The first day he went on TV, he paid almost one million. He said, ah, there must be another way of raising money. And somebody said, continue going. We, we are telling you this thing. We know how it works. And say, together with your preaching, you buy the shoe that has uh, whatever. You put cocaine. If you ship that one successfully, they transfer the money to your account. Who will know? After all, it's just your spirit that is saved. Your, 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 your body, your spirit is going to heaven. Your body will be transformed. All kinds of theology. Apostasy. It may not concern you now, but if you don't pay attention to it, you'll be very surprised. A man of God once said, and I've shared it here, how that he went to minister for one of his spiritual sons. And after he finished the ministration, he... He saw the crowd within a year. There were well over 4,000 people. And he looked at him. He said, ah, in this place, 4,000. He laughed and said, Daddy, you think your oil, what, what you are releasing upon us? And he said, no. He told him, he said, go out. He sat down with his wife. He said, my daughter, talk to me. And she said, I will tell you the truth, sir. He said, they went to somebody, true story, a herbalist who gave them a mic. You know, most men of God, we have our mics. They gave him a mic. But that mic, they slaughtered a baby. Like these are little ones. They slaughtered a baby with the physical blood. They did some enchantments and gave the mic. If you are passing that vicinity and your spirit 
it's not at a particular frequency if you hear that sound you must meander to that church and go and sit down quietly are altar calls being done in that church you won't believe it <laughs> are miracles happening in that church you won't believe it you don't use altar calls and miracles just as a sign that things are okay the man may be sincere but he was desperate for power to an extent that you kill somebody's child one of the ladies here she's even here she sent me a text day before when were we talking about it yesterday or day before yesterday somebody came to steal a baby he stole the baby as he was going out with the baby the mother caught him and he dropped the baby and ran away the lady sent me a text it happened in zaria here Do you know what people do for this anointing? Do you know what people do for power? Do you know what people do for jeep? Apostasy. And people compare themselves with themselves. I shared with you a story years ago about a man of God who had a particular oil that was given to him. You rub it when you enter the meeting, the dramatic manifestations of the spirit. And one day, you know they were doing an early morning service true story and he's like assistant like this um he didn't bath you know because he had to wake up in the morning run to church so maybe you just wash his face and he, the man sent him to go and pick something in his room and when he went he saw the oil you know anointing oil just like, i thank god let me just rub this thing fast so that at least i can look nice i can bath after the service and the guy rubbed the oil when that guy stepped into the church I mean, there were all kinds of somersaults and the Jew looked at him and called him. He said, what did you use? He said, I, I, I saw oil around your this thing and I rubbed it. He said, you rubbed that oil. May the Lord punish me as I stand before you and I'm lying or just giving you a story. Apostasy. Those who have completely deviated, they are not of God, or those who are of God but their doctrines are not of God a man can be of God but his doctrine is of another spirit are we together now it's still apostasy so there are those who as people are not are not um, of God there are not many of these kinds let's be honest in Nigeria popular to the stories people say everybody they are fake men of God everywhere it's not true there are very few people very few and they are not even popular who are fake but a man can be of God but his doctrine there was a doctrine in the Bible called the doctrine of Balaam question was Balaam a false prophet so what why, why was his doctrine being used to admonish the church there was a doctrine called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans which I hate now the Bible tells us about the doctrines demons praise the lord apostasy wrong personalities bringing doctrines from the pit of hell specifically to mislead the body of christ or genuine personalities but not thorough spiritually and then bringing wrong doctrines and ministering it sincerely but is destroying the, the body of christ these two groups form the group that communicate apostasy a man can be genuine a man can be true but his doctrine may not be of god error number two in the body of christ that will stop the body of christ from coming into a place of unity until we work on it is the fear of confronting apostasy we have a group of people, a group of individuals, and a group of men of God who are less as fair and do not care about the general growth of the body. For as long as their individual ministry is doing well, let the body of Christ go places. Look up, please. These are the ones that do not have the courage to be controversial. These are the ones that do not have the courage to address a lot of things. Please look up. They are the kind of people who can see somebody like Sam being corrupted in his worship ministry 
and he's going down and they say well this is not my music director so i don't care they have the fear they hate being controversial they are the kind of men of god who always want a good name they are the kinds of individuals they, they don't want to be associated with any state no 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 let it not be those kinds of people because of that fear of walking in spiritual things and the fear of being spiritual have refused the power of God from finding expression. They are the type who don't want anybody to fall down in the church. No, 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 no. We, we don't want that kind of thing. Somebody starts prophesying, they go and throw him outside. I say, please keep him somewhere close to the toilet, lock him there. We don't want any disturbance. That fear of being controversial. Are we together now? The second error that will stop the body of Christ. When you want to confront certain things, people say, what's your business? Just leave them. Let them do their thing. Shebiu, you are going to heaven. But how many other people are going to hell because of it? Are we together now? Listen, let me show you two scriptures that will bless you very quickly. Mm. Titus chapter 1, verse 10 to 13. This, this scripture is very instructive. Titus 1, verse 10 to 13. Let me tell you why many of the people, the believers and ministers in this group, fear because of their they are so conscious of their ego their ministry and their reputation there are so many men of god in nigeria over conscious of their reputation to an extent that they would rather the body of christ die than they stand strong to say no 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 but this requires adjustment they can gossip about it in the secret they can gather people together and castigate men in the secret. They can say all kinds of things in the secret, but none of them have the courage. They are the type that will see a sister and say, do you know that this sister is sleeping with every brother in this fellowship? And you are wondering, you are her pastor. What is wrong with calling her and say, sister, I love you? They would never say it because they are ashamed of their controversy. They are the type that they say, ah, oh, promise in the, it's in the police station. They say, please, we have many members. This is just one of them. Let the police handle their work there. Because he said, um, if his pastor comes, he can talk to him. He said, please, I'm not a pastor of criminals. You see that? Overly conscious of their reputation. Let me tell you something. And I stand before the Lord of heaven to tell you this. If you have scars, I will get on my knees and I will clean that scars with you. Never will we leave our wounded soldiers simply because of reputation i don't have one i've been controversial from day one there are husbands who will not identify with their wives two years she's not giving birth and somebody looks at her and starts singing a song why do we have two men in this place instead of a man and a wife and the man starts distancing himself the fear listen if you want the body of christ to become one you must drop aside your ministry your ego are we together now because you love the body that's what jesus did you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took on my guilt and shame when you died and rose again now today you reign in heaven and now exalted i really want to worship you my lord you are from my heart and i am yours forever and ever i will love you you are the only one who died for me gave your life to set me free so I lift my hands to you in adoration. Listen, by the grace of God, there is nobody close to me who I will see derailing and I will be ashamed to hold his hands. We have stood by people in this place with all kinds of situations. I'm not, my idea of being a man of God is not gathering that's why men of god do not have spiritual daughters and sons who are blind lame those ones are not sons the one who is a ceo the lady who is drop dead beautiful my daughter 
the one who is, is, is God, God is helping them, all kinds of things. She sick, they don't have money, it's depending on you. That one is a nuisance. The fear of being controversial. The fear of confronting apostasy. They sit down in a place. They are the people who can be outside. And somebody is making derogatory statements against a man of God because of a misconception. And they have the opportunity to say, ah, my brother, whatever it is that happens, you don't address this. They keep quiet. And the person who is talking is saying, I, I think you are aware. You know that a Jimmy is not serious with God. The guy will be nodding. But he's supposed to be a Jimmy's member. But he's nodding because of the fear of identifying. We have people in the body of Christ like that. Are we together now? They are ashamed of identifying with Christ. They are the type who will never put a gospel ringtone. They are the type who can never wear a shirt. Jesus saves. Ah, they are falling their hands. They are the types who can never say bless. They will say bless you when they come for koinonia. But they can do every other thing. Fear. Fear of my ego. Fear of my ego fear of my reputation when they brought the woman caught in adultery to jesus that was what they thought he had the fear they thought he loved his ministry so much that jesus would have nothing to do with a prostitute and they dropped her before him and said you claim to be holy this lady she's been caught in adultery what do you recommend and jesus looked and he says you see all of you whoever does not have sin among you cast the first stone and she was shocked when he went to the samaritan woman there was a time jesus sat with prostitutes he was not preaching they were eating and people said this guy is a liar when mary magdalene broke the alabaster box and was rubbing her hair on jesus's feet people said that's it we've had enough of this this guy is is no you are not straight no way you know mary magdalene somewhere this is not the first time this is happening and watch this jesus never had any pressure to defend himself i know what many of us will do you go and say look i want you to know that i just looked at her and it's not like that i know she's somebody's wife now what is the whole thing can't fear fear of evangelism a guy loves you but he's not sure you are a christian and god says preach to him and you say ah after this guy has written me all kinds of letters, I will lie now and start talking to him about Jesus and fall my hand and scatter everything and say I'm a church girl. The fear of being controversial. Jesus said, whoever is ashamed of me, hear me before men, whoever is ashamed of me before men. You look at a man of God, there is nothing around his life that lets you know he's a man of God. Hallelujah. People can come to your house and say, sorry, oh, bros, that I, I just held one bottle of Buddha. Let me just drink it very fast. I mean, I said, no, no problem. Just sit down and relax. No opportunity to preach and talk to them about Jesus. It's not an issue. And they say, wouldn't you take two? And then you just take one cup too and say, Lord, you know that it's just when in Rome, behave like the Romans do. This group of people are afraid of confronting truth. Listen, there are many pastors in many churches who have seen the truth, but they cannot speak. Are we together now? There are many pastors who know that it's in being filled with the Holy Spirit that you will step to the next level. They watch people go to hell and remain powerless, and they quickly come. That was what happened to a man called Nicodemus, John chapter 3. He had to come to Jesus by night. He was part of those who were shouting at Jesus in the day. You are this and that and that and that, but in his heart. So he came by night and this is what he said. He said, Rabbi, we know you are a man sent from God. For no man, forget all that shout we are shouting in the day. We know the truth. Listen, how many people will insult koinonia, abuse koinonia in the day? And carry the miracle messages and just sneak and lay their hands where the growth is and say god whatever it is let just let let me there are many people i know who may not publicly stand to endorse what we represent but they have come to me in secret and say man of god pray for us sorry you know that it's just because of our environment 
the courage to be controversial. Those are the kinds of people who will blaze the revival. How many people can pray in tongues if their loved ones are around? The courage to be controversial. Titus 1. For there are many disorderly and unruly men who are idle, vain, empty, and misleading talkers. Listen. And self-deceivers and deceivers of others. Listen. He said this is true. Especially of those of the circumcision party who have all of that. Verse 11. Listen. He said their mouths must not be stopped. For they are mentally distressing and subverting whole families by teaching what they ought not to teach. For the purpose of getting base advantage and disreputable gain just stop there there are people like this and he's saying you are watching them he said they should not be allowed to do these things not by writing all kinds of nonsense propaganda but where god gives you an opportunity you can talk to them isaiah 5 verse 20 let's hurry up isaiah 5 verse 20 fear of confronting apostasy they will not speak so you don't know where they are standing because if they speak it may cost them money it may cost them support there are pastors who will never teach because they know the day they teach some truths members will leave and they will rather leave the members and teach error it's a dangerous thing brothers and sisters Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You know those who do that? They are the ones who come and say, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. You preach, I mean, it was powerful. Hey, Jimmy, I can't, I can't believe what you did. And they go back and say, what that guy is teaching? Say, lie. They do not have the courage. Are we together now? Because of money, because of fame. There are men of God who are blossoming on TV stations because they were given conditions not to preach certain things, not to say certain things. And they said, that's all right. That's all right. And it's growing. Right now, the media is trying to strangle God out. You are not allowed to say God again. Now there are technologies that mute those parts. You watch it in films. People are saying, my God and my, and you don't hear anything. They've removed it away. But they can't allow any other curse word to be free. Because there are subliminal messages programming the mind of a generation to be depraved and to run away from God. How many businessmen in Nigeria can go to their business circles and stand and say look we are business people but this is my pastor i am a christian i love the lord ah, i say you don't do that if you do that that's equivalent to one year's wages in jeopardy and so they don't mind behaving that they are not of christ they don't care you are in a board meeting and people are saying this is what we are supposed to give the workers but we are going to chop this one just don't mind them all these poor people and you are there you just laugh when it backfires you say i didn't say anything but you watched it you would have enjoyed it if it came the bible says they are the ones who call who is there any problem no 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 not, not at all it's all right the fear of being controversial that's what happens in nigeria that's why we are suffering and having all the kinds of things we're having because there are men whose loyalty cannot be defined there's a man of God I love so much. Many of you know him. Pastor Tony Bakari. I love him very well because, not necessarily because I believe in all of his ideologies. I love him because he's a man who stands. I love people who you can define what they represent. Let me tell you, never be friends to somebody who is friends to everybody. He's a dangerous person. They cannot define their stand. You don't know what camp they are in. Today it looks like they are here. Tomorrow it looks like they are here. They can become anything as occasion serves them. They are dangerous people. Very dangerous people. 
Are we together now? There are so many people like that. There are people who come to church. They are nice in church. But you can, if you organize one party, they won't come in the, in the evening. When the light has gone down, they'll just roll and say, I just came around. Before you do it, they start nodding to the music. Last scripture. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. The second category of people who are causing error in the body of Christ. Those who fear confronting any deviation from the patterns of God. Because of what it will cost them. Ezekiel 3 verse 18 and 19. Listen. If you say to the wicked. If I say to the wicked. You shall surely die. And you do not give him warning. Are you hearing now? Or speak to warn the wicked to turn from his wicked way. To save his life. He said the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require from your hand. Next verse. Yet, if you warn the wicked man, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered yourself. There are many men of God who are holding in their hands people's reasons for going to hellfire. And I assure you, they will answer God. The rich man is unfaithful to his wife you know it the rich man is into drugs you know it he carried 100 million from the drug money and brought it to your church and because you need the money you cannot sit down to say sir please hold your money i'm more interested in your soul out of that one million you have already calculated two jeeps 10 10 million that's 20 tight 10 million instruments speakers i'll buy another are four for my wife you have calculated it god is watching the fear of being controversial you can stand with one billion naira i will tell you the truth and tell you this is it this is not it number three is god speaking to us ready for number three the third reason or the third error is exaggerated confrontation of error. Hmm. Pay attention to what I'm about to teach. Exaggerated confrontation of error. This is the third kind of error. So the first is apostasy. The second is the error of silence and indifference. The third is the error of imbalance. Imbalance, misjudgment. This is where I'll dwell and then we'll pray. The third category of people, those who are cynical, wicked by default, who pride themselves at exposing and revealing the downfall of people in a bid to prove that they are correcting, they find pleasure in revealing the flaws of the body of Christ. They are the type who will hold on to certain things in a person or in a ministry and stop people from receiving from God. Listen. There are many men of God today who preach against receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask them why. They will say, I went for a meeting and I saw a man of God teaching people how to pray in tongues. Because of that singular mistake, they build a doctrine around it and use it as the basis for attacking anything that will become a blessing. Are we together? Because they had a story that a man of God was sleeping with another man's wife. They just say, all young men, especially when all these ones that wear suit, no tie, be careful. You see that? They say, I remember an incident. They pick on that one and build a doctrine out of it. It's called exaggerated confrontation of error. It would have been good if it were kept within the ambience of its relevance. But by default, they had always been intimidated. Listen, this group of people are those who never do anything serious. They are the ones who look for justifications. When people are praying, 
three hours eight hours and they are not praying they are the ones who are intimidated the day somebody from the prayer group falls sick they are the ones to let you know those prayer people somebody has fallen sick it's not all about prayer and they say i've been telling you so they they look for situations to justify their failures and their inability for making a mark i watched a video this afternoon that touched me it was a um many of you know a tedx and all of that so i was watching i saw the name it says the power of shame and i said wow this is interesting let me and then i clicked on it to listen to it and it was monica Lewinsky. remember uh, some of you were <laughs> hallelujah 1998 the saga between her and bill clinton right had a scandal and you won't believe it jimmy when i heard molly kalewinski talk for about 30 minutes i'm not an emotional person honestly especially when i'm under the anointing but i found myself fighting tears because popular to the stories they gave us popular to the way they lambasted that lady a 22 year old lady at that point you are the one who wants to sleep with our president and the, nobody heard her opinion they tore her into pieces and for about 10 or 20 years she could not come up in the open because of the shame and the degradation and when she was talking people were crying i said this reminds me of our world i can stand to preach and make a mistake in communicating something what i wanted to say did not leave to you the way it came those who sit in koinonia are already used to me making that kind of error say they understand what i would have said but somebody who has been looking for an occasion say come and listen to this he will cut he will even thank god for i mean he will cut i said just listen to this line he said apostle joshua selman said the primary assignment of the holy spirit is to kill you now he didn't understand what i was saying he said can you see that and you are going to that kind of church <laughs> They are the type who will say, ah, miracles are stage managed. And then the day somebody comes and says, Kai, I went to this ministry, let me tell you the truth. Kai, what I saw, I didn't like it. They said, you see, but they are always looking for an occasion to validate their weaknesses and their intimidation. So every time they, it seems like they are correcting the body of Christ, they are not correcting the body of Christ. They are venting a philosophy that will give them a breathing space. The goal of their correcting men of God or correcting doctrines is not to create order. The goal is to excuse their limitations. Is God speaking to us? Their confrontation is from the standpoint of jealousy, from the standpoint of envy, bitter jealousy, the standpoint of envy, they use the truth to destroy. They use the truth to gratify the desires of the flesh. They are the type that will fight prosperity and will use one case study. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm sorry to say it and I say it with every sense of apology. I've heard of men of God who castigate ministers and talk about people maybe selling communion table. You know, there are churches that sell communion table, wristband, water, etc., etc. Now, there is an exaggeration to those things. But you do not throw the baby and the bad water. Thank God I'm not selling anything to you. But I've seen a lot of ministers, even communion, they criticize ministries and say people are selling blood. They are selling this. Ah, forget this. They are fathers of faith. What sort of nonsense is that? The people do not understand the mysteries. I've seen people insult God's servant Bishop David Foyeriko because of feet washing. You may not practice it. You may have reservations about that. But learn to respect people's dimensions and revelations. And even where you are addressing such issues for corrective purpose, it must come from a heart of love, not from a heart of bitter jealousy. There is a way I can talk about a man of God. You will know I have a personal vendetta. This is not about addressing an issue. This is a preconceived anger in me that has been seeking for a platform to find expression. Hear me. 
if you belong to that group it must change tonight are we together a lady who is feeling bad about herself has a very bad self-image and may not work on it and all of a sudden she may see a pretty lady and then see the lady dressed very nude and say look at look at what this look at all your christian girls the way she's is true that that lady is nude but her addressing it is not because the lady is nude she is angry at the beauty of the lady and the reaction it is creating to her awareness that she's not good enough so she's using hammer to kill a fly she keeps talking about it. I said, something pain me today. What is it? See, the way these Christian girls dress. The, what they are trying to address is imbalance. Hear men of God talk about miracles. They say, do you know that people stage manage miracles? There are people who do this. Yes, we know that there are people who do this. But are there people who teach the truth? Are there people who teach the truth? Every young man that is prosperous, oh, they are drug barons, they are this, this, they are 419, they are whatever. Don't mind them. How can a young man be so rich? Don't worry. I mean, life has time. Your limitation, what you believe, you transfer it to a congregation and keep people poor and keep people fighting everybody. Listen to me. Some of you subconsciously are partnering with the devil to destroy the body of Christ. I told you here, you never hear me open open my mouth and talk about a man of God to condemn him if I mention the name of a man of God is to honor him for something I challenge wrong doctrines I would challenge things that I feel need to be corrected are we together but I will never tear down another man's ministry because I'm trying to show you hear me say it again that all koinonia is doing is a contribution to the advancement of the kingdom it will be fallacy for you to believe koinonia is the only ministry that is making impact thank god for the wonderful things he's doing through us but i am aware you are aware that all around the world there are men and women of god who love god with all their heart some of us will never receive blessings from somebody from a catholic church because of your cynicism oh holy mary they do this and that and that and that and God brings somebody to your life who can bless you. But that stigma, because of the exaggerated confrontation of what you may consider to be imbalance, you have closed your heart. Somebody from another denomination cooks food for you. He says, God forbid me, I can't eat this. What has that got to do with the food? There are pastors who have propagated all kinds of messages. Once it is not your member with your church having your wristband, or having the pastors or all, all kinds of things you fight everybody let me tell you it is a lie from the pit of hell don't you let no man give you an impression like him or his ministry are the ultimate custodians of the activities of the spirit is in itself is an error jesus said i pray that they may be one that's why you don't find anybody get up here and come and say oh the god of koinonia I don't have a problem with it honestly but i personally for organizational purposes no we give the glory to god and it stops there are we together three great errors the error of apostasy the error of indifference is more deceptive than apostasy because nobody knows where you stand they don't know whether you speak in tongues or not they are not sure they don't know whether you believe in miracles or not please look at me the second category they are the type who can go to a harbalist and still come to a man of god they don't care are we together now yeah they are the types who who will run and take drugs in the secret swallow panadol swallow fancida and come up and say look in the last 10 years god is my witness even a, even i don't even know how panadol what was even the name as if they have forgotten panadol how old are you you see the second category the day now they are sick and they have something like a growth that is obvious they travel and don't come to church the lord asked me to preach this because it's very important it's a message to us and it's a message to the body of christ listen galatians chapter 6 verse 1 two scriptures and then i tie it up and we'll pray galatians 6 verse 1 Brethren, 
if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort listen he's teaching you how to confront error there is a way to confront error there is a way to confront sin there is a way to confront mistakes are we together there is a way to bring confrontation such that it ends up bringing healing and addition and multiplication to the body he says brethren if any person is overtaken in misconduct or sin of any sort he says, you who are spiritual who are responsive listen to and controlled by the spirit should set him right and restore and reinstate him listen without what any sense of superiority and with all gentleness then he puts a disclaimer keeping an attentive eye on yourself see that less you should be tempted to okay the guy came to you and said honestly i love god but last week i found myself going to a herbalist place to collect a charm i say ah go and tell apostle <laughs> it's not even me that will say this thing but you see that and before you know it everybody in zaria knows that promise went to collect the charm you destroy his life you destroy his ministry and you say i've always known it's not today there was a day the holy spirit was revealing to me holy spirit i'm sorry for refusing to hear you we we pride ourselves listen how many wounded soldiers i'm rounding up in the body of christ do you know the greatest place where believers die is the church i'm not justifying that people live lawless and just do all kinds of nonsense let a lady get pregnant in church and you hear what happens am i am i endorsing it no let a lady get pregnant it's a believer who will come to you and say have you had say you mean you are here Kai, you have eyes you can't see are we together now a brother goes to ask a sister and she says no no i'm honestly i'm already engaged to somebody before you know it this brother says, i'm happy it's good for them blah, blah, blah. you carry and ship trouble it is only in the church where people destroy their wounded soldiers with joy may that never happen in koinonia in the name of jesus christ we have managed all kinds of cases in this ministry all kinds and God is my witness. I love the people with all my heart and with all passion. There are people who have come to meet me with charms. This is what we were doing. There are ladies who have gone to Zaria City and come to say, I don't say, ah, no, no, no. With all the teaching, I'm, no, 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 no. You don't do that. When a brother is caught or a sister, you restore one. Are we together now? If a man of God comes to how many men of God have come to me? Man of God. I'm preaching but I'm caught up in masturbation or pornography. I don't look and I say you, of all people, there's no such thing as that. Let me tell you, there is no man who cannot fall. We are all products of God's mercy. I have learned this. I know that if any man is standing, he's only standing because of God's grace. Grace, your grace. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Grace, your grace shines on me. Listen, that's how we treat people all around. You see a fellow believer belonging to a particular church, you stand and laugh at them. Ah, see this lady tying her hair in a certain way. See this one cat walking, and there are people who see certain ladies. The lady is just wearing her trousers. I say, Look at them. These are all the prostitute ladies moving all around. What is this? It's wrong is wrong that love is what we do not have that's why we don't see the power of god we pray we fast but we have no love he said there remained these three faith hope and love but the greatest of all is love there is no ministry i cannot preach in there is no man of god i cannot talk to no matter i don't care who I love the body of Christ and I love the body of Christ passionately. 
Are we together now? Very important. There are books many of us would have read that would have blessed us. But because it was written by authors, our pastors have condemned. The Holy Spirit is nudging you. Read this book. There is lawlessness in your church. Read Papa Kubui's book for instance. Maybe he wrote a book on holiness. And God is saying, read it. You need it. But I say, no, 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 no. The church I come from, we have all of this and you lose out. There was a time during my retreat, for one whole day, the Holy Spirit, well, it started in the night, but the Holy Spirit told me to listen to Papa Kumui's messages. Man, that thing flogged me from head to toe. Just the greeting. It wasn't even what he was addressing. There was a spirit that oozed out of him that I, I don't know how many things I repented from, from that night in morning. And it was good for me. See, brothers and sisters, you must love the body of Christ. We are all going to the same heaven. There is none that will be created for only you. I love the body of Christ. I never discriminate people. I can't see a lady now and say, oh, you are this, you are this. No. See, if you are wounded and there's something wrong in your life, if you are looking for somebody to start you, you have found one. Me, Joshua Selman. I'm not afraid of being controversial. I'm not one of those cowards. One of our ladies years ago was pregnant out of wedlock. You remember her? This thing ruined the lady. It was Christians. I'm not justifying it. Brothers and sisters, how believers stab themselves. They messed up this lady's life. Almost destroyed her life. In an attempt to show that holiness pays. Yes, it does. But what do you do with a soldier who is wounded? Rebels don't come to God. They run away. When a man comes to God, no matter how wounded he is, he's not a rebel. Are we together now? Jesus said, he who does not have any sin should cast the first stone. When you are pointing one hand at people, three fingers are pointing back at you. I remember that lady came she found a home that time we used to meet in, in the campus there do you know a time would come whenever we are preaching her baby would just be silent when we get up and we start praying she'll say her baby is kicking she found love found acceptance I used to bless that lady with money every time she was because of the shame and the reproach that believers brought to her life she said she wanted to defer I said you are not deferring you must finish and I'm going to stand with you. I think a Jimmy is a witness and a few people here. I used to walk with that lady with her big stomach. I would walk with her in front of their hostel, Amina, and drop her there. Let anybody think what he wants to think. They say, the way this guy is being careful with this pregnancy, are you sure that whatever you want to think, think it? Are we together now? I will never forget I, I was so passionate about her issue. The Lord revealed to me the day she would give birth. And I told her, I said, prepare on a Wednesday. You are going to give birth. That morning, she called in the morning. I was so happy as if it was my child. As she was giving birth, I was already appearing in Shika happily. When she gave birth, I said, I want the child. Where is the child? Are you the father? That's not the issue. I want the child. I held that child. Listen. I prophesied to that child from the depth of my heart. People were looking at me. That child's destiny, parents can choose to mess up, but children don't choose to come. Give them a right to enjoy a blessed life. Are we together? I have stood by people here in police stations. Oh, some, some person is in police station and he said they should talk to you. Oh, this. he said you are his pastor. He said you are this. I said, what's his name? I said, yes, I know him. Oh, this person did A and B. I said, I'm coming. And I will go there. I will appear there. Ah, ah. Sorry, sir. Are you not the person calling on here? Yes, I'm the one. They are our wounded soldiers. But we'll hold them to a place of victory. Well, I'm not a coward. No. Listen, I'm encouraging you. This night, practice that ministry. Some of you need to go back to somebody. And say look i left you the day i found out that you were drinking but i'm back to tell you i love you 
I see the way you are struggling to listen to koinonia messages. I see how sincerely you have a passion to get back. I'm here to help you. You do that, you will see the power of God in your life. I never, never have, never will condemn anybody. See, let me tell you, there is nobody God cannot change. Don't you sit down and say, me, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do this. Just keep quiet and say, Lord, I give you all the praise. During our counseling session, you see Muslims come. People come, Muslims, because they know that I love them and I'm friendly. I don't squeeze my face as if, as if I'm the person who did this and say, why are you here? Are you not? No, 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 no. Everybody Jesus healed in the Bible was not born again. But he still healed them. I love them. I play with their children. I'm happy. I have blessed the lives of people who, today who have no business, nothing in return for me. Please, I'm teaching you something that will bless you. There are people who cannot come for Koinonia right now because of scars in their lives. And some of us are the ones who are helping to keep that scars. There are roommates who would have won to Jesus Christ. There are fathers and mothers who have done all kinds of things. But we are the ones who destroy them. Exaggerated confrontation. I even hear that in many churches, it's even an, a thing of embarrassment. They come and embarrass the people publicly. Embarrass the parents. Misquoting the scripture that says you should rebuke them publicly. We don't even understand what God is saying. Whereas the person who is rebuking the guy for smoking has gold that hidden somewhere. He turned it inside a cup and kept it in a fridge. You would think he's Zobo. Does Zobo foam? Let's tell ourselves the truth and cry for the mercy of God. Let me tell you, listen. I have learned something by experience. Once you see somebody over talking about a little issue, he's a victim of it. He, that talk is to create a sense of justification. Believe what I'm telling you. The day Jesus Christ will come, you will be surprised to see those who are really close to him. You will think it will be Joshua Selman with all my ministry regalia. God will just go to somebody who you would have thought was an outcast. Because we who think we are great, we are arrogant people and will not come to God. But there are those who say, Lord, in iniquity did my mother bet me from beginning i inherited it and i've worked in it have mercy upon me and god says these are the kinds of people who will find him every time i go to god i don't go with a sense of condemnation but brothers and sisters i go with a sense of gratitude ah because i know i know what the mercy of god has done in my life are we together the next time you turn and you see a lady pregnant don't start asking stupid questions. You turn and see somebody, ah, he went for a party and they injured him and he's back to God answering altar call. He said, but bros, now where did you go to that they hit you like this? It's over. Learn to help people. I'm not laughing. Three errors that are stopping the unity of the body. I love people. I love you. Whenever you see me rebuke you, you know from the depth of your heart that it is out of love. I can rebuke you but when you commit the offense, I will be there. I wrote a song years ago. The bandage is larger than the wound. I will sing it one day for you. I wrote that song to help hurting people. I'm concluding. Jesus gives a story of a Samaritan woman. Right? A, a, a good Samaritan. Somebody was beaten by armed robbers. Are we together? A religious person came and passed and looked at him. Not wanting to be unclean. Left. A pastor came and looked at him. And saw it and said, no, 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 no. I'm holy. And left. But then another person came, a Samaritan. And got down on his knees and cleaned him. Whose wounds have you cleaned? See, the true picture of fatherhood is the ability to rebuke and yet cover the ability to rebuke and yet guide to tell you no 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 gulda is gulda it's not the way of god however there is a grace that can help you i am willing to help you 
I'll never forget years ago when a lady developed like a bipolar problem. She was seeing things. She was supposedly praying in tongues for two hours. They took her to security office. They called her pastor. He kept giving all kinds of excuses. I refused to come. The lady, I mean, she would literally fight with anybody. Bah, 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 bah. Praying supposedly overnight, like for two days, non-stop. I just, somebody, she doesn't even attend our meetings. Then somebody who used to attend the meeting called on me. I said, I'm coming. I was at the security office. I just got there and they said I should write a statement. I said, for what? I'm, allow me to find out what is going on first. I will take any embarrassment if it is for you. I will take any embarrassment if it's for the kingdom. Let me be controversial. Misunderstand me. The most important thing is that no man will judge us on that day. When we stand before him, God will... See, let me tell you, the day we stand before God, you will be surprised to see the people who will enter heaven. And you'll be surprised to see those who will be said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. You will see somebody you have concluded upon who later, when you died, gave his life to Christ and God used him. Who would have said Saul will be the one to bless people? Who would have said so? Listen, live your life with eternity in view. Do not be afraid to stand for the kingdom. Do not be a man of values. When people are bleeding, be there. We are rounding up. God told me if we can address these three errors, there will be no reason for criticism again. There will be no reason for anything strange. There are people who wait for men of God to fall. That's why prayer department and the rest pray for. I mean, they are waiting. They are waiting. Somebody who does not know anything about finances goes to write an article about a pastor and says somebody gave him money. What is your business? If you don't understand kingdom finances, you don't get up and now begin to talk and run your mouth and say all kinds of rubbish. Oh, the TV ministry he is doing, he is doing it out of this and that and that. Let somebody just appear now and just put a baby and say exposed. Joshua Selman has a three-year-old, this beautiful lady is his daughter. And he will say, you know, uh, my conscience, the same you, the same you who is looking at me right now, the same you who is receiving miracles, the same you who is a man of God with envelopes and kneeling down, they were the same people who said crucify him. Please reduce it to keys. Let's sing one song and close this night. There's a song in my spirit. Play, 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 Mike. When we all get to hell, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all We'll see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. I have a version. When we all get to heaven, what a day of surprises that will be. Because you will see people you never felt will make heaven. You see people who you look at them and think because they are controversial they are not of God you will see them stand at the gates of heaven and you will watch the way the gates will be shot against many who stand with their self-righteousness killing the body of Christ rejoiner when you read his book the final quest it was a revelation of the operation of the body of Christ please read the book if you can get it I read it years ago and it blessed me and when he was shown the vision of the body of Christ, he saw so many people climbing a ladder and he saw others pulling them down. And they were Christians who were pulling their soldiers. He found out that whenever any believer had an issue, many people came and were stabbing him with a knife and they were all Christians. 
may it never be through your life that somebody will miss heaven because something about an exaggerated i'm not teaching you to not confront error but it in itself is an error to move beyond certain things and destroy a man's ministry a prophet went to a church and saw by revelation that a man of god's wife was sleeping with somebody in the church what will a wise prophet do will you not come down after the meeting you call the woman and say mama please don't be offended this is what i saw i can pray with you i can help you he just carried his big mouth and ran it in the church and saying what i'm seeing is a surprise well i did that, that and that who is by the name abc people clap ah mama you got it right who is by the name so so person they clap they say two of you you know what you are doing and he just taught that ministry into two you think that's the will of god all i have needed thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness lord great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, to me. I want you to make two decisions tonight. One, that you will never complain and grumble again. It looks like an impossible situation. But I want you to make that determination that from today, I will never find myself opening my mouth to say, God, why? Why me? Why not you? Who else? Make a decision today. Hear me at this miracle service that you will never complain again. That you will tell yourself, my God is good all the time, regardless of my experiences. This is how I am. You will never hear me open my mouth and say, God, why now? I wanted tea. Only sugar came. Can you bring bomb vita and hot water? No. God, you are faithful at all times. Are we together? The Bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine. Right? Make that decision. Decision number two make up your mind to be ever thankful ever thankful not when you get a testimony make it a lifestyle many of us thank god when they give you a testimony oh a new shoe just arrived a new tie just arrived you must make up your mind let people believe that every day is Christmas or New Year for you because of your attitude of gratitude. People come to your house and you say, Lord, I thank you because you are faithful. Thank you for abundance. You are a good God. And your friend says, I thought you said you just have Gary, no sugar. You say, exactly. Say, somebody just sent you an alert. Abby. No, my God is faithful. That's how I am. In Nigeria, yes, that's how I am. Give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks God is ministering to you to the Holy One give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son give thanks with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One Give thanks Because it's given Jesus Christ Sing it with faith in your heart And now Let the weak say I am strong And let the poor say I'm 
challenging you to make decisions that will keep you consistent. Number one, avoid complaint. Nothing slows down consistency. Nothing produces inconsistency as a life full of bitterness and complaint and grumbling. Let me tell you something. Murmuring is sin. Murmuring is not just wrong. Write it down. Murmuring is sin. You find out from scripture how people perished for murmuring. The Bible says they limited the Holy One by murmuring. Complaining. Lord, you should have done this. Lord, you should have done this. And uh -uh, make a decision under God. Advise yourself that I need to be consistent. And I will never find myself murmuring and complaining again. That does not mean everything will be a bed of roses, I tell you. Challenges will come. But you must make up your mind. Make up your mind that you will not murmur. Number two, thanksgiving. I told us. That's the second decision that will make you consistent in life. Thanksgiving. Whether you have a reason to be thankful or not, find a reason. One of our dear ladies in Lagos, we were at their house yesterday to visit with the family. And um, I think I've shared the story. She may even be following online right now. This lady about three years ago, during her birthday, her friends just poured, um, I can't remember what they poured now, caustic soda. And the lady became blind. On her birthday, her friends, careless friends rejoicing without sense poured caustic soda and now the lady for three, four years now is blind. But let me tell you, I've not seen a human being happier than that lady till yesterday. I promised her that the next time we were in Lagos, we would visit her. We were so tired yesterday, but I made up my mind to visit with the family. And when we got there, she was blind. When she felt my hand, she was shouting, ah, Apostle, she was so happy. They were the first people to give me a birthday gift. Lovely father, lovely mother, lovely everyone. And the lady was so happy, joyful. Never for once did she tell me, Apostle, but will my eyes open? It seemed as though it was not even her business. She was talking to me that she was going abroad because she was in 300 level when she went blind. So nothing for schooling again. She was saying, Apostle, I want to go abroad and study psychology and counseling. And we're laughing. That's a blind person. A blind lady who would have planned to be married maybe by now. Supposedly her destiny is shattered. Is it not when your eyes is open that you can see money to collect? Very happy lady. She challenged me sincerely. I thought about that experience even while we came today. I said, my goodness. That means your circumstances do not have to determine the extent of your joy, your gratitude. You can choose to respond instead of reacting. Oh, this is unfavorable, but God is still faithful. And Lord, I thank you. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you thank God, you frustrate Satan. Thank you, Jesus. I thought my, my pension will come. It's five years now. But I thank you. You are still faithful. I thought we'll be able to complete the house in 2014. But till now, we've not even lifted it to lintel level. But I thank you that I have a land. I may not have a structure on it. In one minute, can you find everything God has done in your life and tell him thank you? Forget about what he has not done. If you do not have anything, you are a liar. Go ahead, mention them. Go ahead and mention them. Lord, you are faithful. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for life, for strength, for health. Tell him thank you. I may not have a house, but I am sane enough to even think of sleeping.
are you grateful koinonia those outside for some of you this is your miracle as you're thanking god you will find out that that sickness is no more there it responds to gratitude Lord, I may not have money, but thank you. I have an account that is ready to receive your favor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Decision number three that will help you become consistent and persistent is to walk in love. Walk in love. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Once there is no love in your heart, you just puncture the tank of your destiny. Get set for an empty tank. The moment there is no love, it's better that you do not have faith it's better that you do not have faith I guarantee you when all else fail in your life make sure your love does not fail love the antidote to offense you will find men and women who will be sarcastic they will say things ah are you aware that that woman is barren in case they've not told you know it now it's been 8 years all the children you see in a house are adopted. When you hear such a news, it can break your spirit. What if your own friends let you down? What if those you trust, you committed secrets to them about your life and they dashed it on the floor? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, blessed are you when you are not offended. There are a thousand and one reasons to be offended. Believe me when I tell you I have no offense in my life. There is no man on earth that is in any blacklist. I don't even have it. I'm a happy person. Every list is white. Vision and fulfillment. No blacklist. Now, as a leader, you can imagine how people treat you every day. From waking up to all kinds of things. On the road, someone wants to jam you. And then he's insulting you again. And you now turn and tell him, your father or your mother. Or whatever it is that you want to use. And then you quickly remember that, ah, there's miracle service today. Now, Are we together? People can be so foolish, they can annoy you. People can be so careless, they can annoy you. Your loved ones can be so insensitive. But you must make up your mind today that you will walk in love. Walk in love and watch how cheap Satan is. Watch how the mountains before you will melt like wax. It says love never fails. Everybody repeat it after me. In Nigeria, where we are looking for insurance and guarantee, I give you one. Are we together? Many insurance companies will come and say, come and work with us. Do business with us. We are 150 years old. We can insure you. We can insure your life and your car. I found something in life that does not fail. Greater than potentials. Love never, not love can fail and then readjust itself love never fails, I give you the fail proof, the fail proof key to living walk in love genuinely and passionately make room for love in your heart, towards people you don't like, towards people who insult you make up your mind that forever the love of God has consumed me. And you will see how the anointing will multiply in your life. You will see how God will, let me tell you, I have used this in my life. God has used love to turn mountains. What my faith could not do, my love did for me. Forever I am changed by your love. 
in the presence of your majesty sing majesty majesty sing majesty majesty forever we are changed forever we are changed by your love we're in the presence of I'd like you to pray for yourself in one minute and say, Lord, take away bitterness from my heart. That, 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 that spirit of bitterness and anger that rejoices when I'm afflicting pain at others. Oh, apostle, you don't know what they did to me. I don't care. I don't care what happened to you. Walking in love is a choice. Walking in love is a choice. Hear me, I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. You can choose to walk in love. I will never forget, forgive that woman till Jesus comes. Then you are not ready to see the power of God in your life. The third decision that can make you consistent is to walk in love. Anytime, every time, at all times. Hallelujah. Never allow yourself be a victim of communicating lack of love. I hate this person. Are you aware that I hate Pastor Alpha? Are you aware that I hate Mama? I'm just keeping quiet. The day his cup will be full. See, let me tell you, those who talk like that never go far. Don't you ever think you will compromise on the law of love and get miracles. Only herbalists give miracles without love. The, the initiator of miracle is love. He was moved with compassion. He saw them as sheep without shepherd. Although they were insulting him, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do love love the last decision that will help you become consistent are you ready is vision vision the bible says without vision the people perish the word perish was not accurately translated the word there is to cast off restraint in other words, to veer off from a path. Vision. And nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophecy that backs it. Nothing keeps vision like the memory of the prophetic word that came with that vision. I may not remember what I said, but God told me. I remember. God told me I would build that house. I remember what he told me in 200 level that I will be a PhD holder. God told me prophecy is powerful. It keeps men consistent. The moment you are about to gas out, a prophetic word comes. And God says, what did I tell you before you got married? Did I not tell you after four years I will lift you? You are just in the third year. Don't give up. My word still stands and it supplies strength and you can fire on. What did I tell you before you would start that business? I told you that I will lift you. And so you stand. Many of us forget the prophetic words upon our lives. We trivialize it. Now I know that we live in a generation where everybody is a prophet. Somebody just sees you and says something that is not worth remembering. But I tell you when you hear something that is of God. There are things God has spoken about in my life. I even forgot them. When they happened, I went back. I had to go back and check my notes. And said, my God, you said this. You said this. The first time God spoke to me about Koinonia was 2005. I wrote it down, but I didn't pay attention. So when God spoke to me about starting it, I think it was last year or so. I was going through all of my notes during my retreat and I saw it there. 
I said, my goodness. When God speaks, hear me, he is worth believing. Whether you have any evidence or not, just believe him foolishly. God, you said by December, I will own a house. This is June. There is no land available. I have 5,000 in my account, home and abroad. And God says, so what? I never told you you will buy the house. I said you will have a house. There are many ways to have a house. It can be given. Someone can lack his sleep and God says, this is the man to bless. You know, many of us don't believe God can move in these dimensions. I believe him. Absolutely, I believe him. Are we together? I believe God with all my heart because I know he is faithful. There are things he has said to us as a ministry. There are things he has said to me as a person. I have watched one by one. One by one. And there are many more that will come to pass. I want to ask you a question. What has God said concerning your life? What prophecy has come upon you? As a family of faith, God declared unto us that this is our year of what? Multiplied grace and influence. God saw fuel crisis when he made that statement. God saw the dollar nose diving, the naira nose diving when he made that statement. It's up to you to remain consistent or join those who are making noise and perish with them. God's obsession is to be trusted. He wants to be trusted. Are we together? If he said it, I believe it. If it does not work, at least I won't die. But I know that I believe him. Do you believe God? Let me tell you something. There is nothing God will tell you that looks possible. If God tells you something that looks possible, you didn't hear him. Because God speaks from his realm. He will never tell you what is possible. Your brain and your job can tell you, save to 200,000. In five months, you have one million. Go and buy Toyota Camry. That's your brain. But God says, I will give you the treasures of darkness. And he said, God, how? The how is none of your business. Here's how the Bible puts it. He said, just as you do not know the way of the wind, nor how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child, so also you do not know the way of the Lord. God walks in mysterious ways. Are we together? Somebody called me. He's getting married next month. And he said they did the budget. They, they updated it and it was 2.7. I said, how much do you have? And he said he has 40,000. And I said, don't, don't laugh. I'm, I'm, listen, it's not an irresponsible person. I can tell you this. It's just that he, he's in a situation right now and he needs a miracle. And he said, man of God, will this thing come to pass? I said, you even have 40,000 and you are complaining. Ask those who had only five loaves and two fish and were about to feed 5,000 people immediately. Time was not given. Immediately, five loaves. I love Jesus. What a man that inspires me. Five loaves and two fishes. And he said, ask them to sit down. If you don't believe God enough to sit down, no bread for you. You have to, you have to prove that you, sitting down means be at rest. Because your standing is, let me watch in case it doesn't happen. Let me quickly dodge. And God says, I don't walk like that. You must be still. Then you will know that I am God. You can't be busy and say, Lord, be proving it while I wage my faith because I'm used to you disappointing me. No. Ah, I love Esther. If I perish, I perish. Are there such people this night? Men who will believe God. I'm motivating you and speaking over your life to continue and be consistent. Who told you it will never come to pass? The person who is laughing at you is also on earth trying to figure out his own life. What confidence do they have? It's like two people, you are writing exams and the person is laughing and say you are sweating, Abby. Whereas he's writing the same exam. Is he not foolish? I'm speaking to somebody here. 
by the spirit of the living God that the Egyptians you see today that have mocked you Kabaka Suta Pratika Pariata the Egyptians you see today you are not the first to see Egyptians this man standing before you lives with Egyptians it's not that I saw them there, there, there is a level you get to as a leader you don't conquer challenges you walk through them they, are, they become your companions <laughs> ah yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he says I fear no evil he says for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me then he says this thou prepare you are not in a hurry you are taking your time to prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies we are going to pray God is ministering to us please I want to challenge somebody go back and hold that thing you were doing and continue I don't know who asked you to stop that business I know what stopped you pain stopped you you opened the shop and everything dried go and open it again let them laugh at you go and open it when you succeed, they will bite their words again. Are we together? Yeah. Don't mind Nigerians and their sarcastic way of laughing people out of destiny. That's why only few people ever succeed. Are we together? The Lord is asking me to prophesy to someone here that you should go back to what he asks you to do. God asks you to put your hand on that plow. I'm speaking specifically concerning work and career and business. There are people God directed to certain things but because of your pain and failure you are saying look, I'm, I, I want to follow the path of least resistance. That's the path of failures. Are we together? Yeah. never allow pain stop you from being consistent never allow the mockery of people while they were mocking Noah he was busy building the ark while they were mocking him after 90 years he continued 100 years he continued after 120 years God said Noah get into the ark I'm about to send the rain as I said God told you this year you will hold your first million and you are saying God this is June this is June and God says don't insult me I am more than able to wipe your tears it's up to you to believe God oh this year you will get married God as I'm speaking to you right now there is no man in my life the last man who came came as as careless as he came that's how he went and God says it doesn't matter how long does it take to settle you? Let me tell you, it doesn't take time to marry. It just takes vision and finances. Once there is no money, you shift dates. When God brings his blessings, he brings every resource to make it happen. Are we together? Yeah. God said you will be gainfully employed this year. It's June. And the last place where you were holding on to, Air Force, just came out day before yesterday. Your name is not there. Are we together? The person who would help you just called and said, Look, young man, um, I thought we'll be able to fix you up at Shell or Chevron. But I'm sad to announce to you, even us, we are standing to maintain our position. And then you will know that by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. That's the time to hand over to God. I believe yes lord i believe yes lord i believe it is well with me it is well with me i believe yes lord i believe yes lord i believe it is well one more time Lord, I believe, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, it is well with me. We are going to pray. 
He reigns. He reigns. He is standing by my side to bring His word to pass. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. Rise up on your feet. You reign, you reign, you reign. Yes, you reign. You are standing by my side to bring His word to pass. You reign. Sing it to Him from your heart. For the last time now, you wait, you wait, you wait. Abracabarada, and say Lord I challenge unbelief I'm a believer you are not a liar when you speak you bring your word to pass are you praying inside and outside I believe you I believe you, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. Manda Prata Shabarada Baladaba Kosa Pradiga de Baladaba. Go ahead and say, Lord, I believe you. You are not a man that you should lie. You are not the son of man that you should repent. I hold on to prophecy. I hold on to prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to open your mouth and cry before God. Tell him what must happen in your life this night. What you are tired of that must leave you today. Not tomorrow. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. The power of God is able to touch you and change your situation. You've had the testimonies of others. Pray, pray. Is part of the meeting. Tonight, I hold on to the four horns of the altar. Don't stop, you are praying. The Lord will do a quick walk here tonight. Ah, 
Habarata Pasha. Change my story, O oh God. Change that genotype, O oh God. Open up that womb, O oh God. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Tonight will be an extraordinary night. It will be very fast what the Lord will do. Very fast. The message is what you have received. Very fast. I like you to expect miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, no instruments. Stop. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. That's the instruction God is giving me. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to pray. I want to pray and I'm hearing the word breakthrough. That's the first thing I'm praying for. Listen, please. The moment I begin to pray that prayer of breakthrough, I want you to bring everyone under the anointing for that word. For some of you to surprise you the way the power of God will come upon you. I tell you, the moment the power of God touches you, know that this prophecy is for you. I hear the word breakthrough. Breakthrough. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I don't know where they are. Right now. Kabarakatozabarikata. I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this congregation right now. Everyone under the influence of this prophetic word right now, right now, right now. The first overflow outside right now, right now, right now. Breakthrough. There is an angel of the Lord identifying men. Breakthrough. Bring them in. Breakthrough. Kata la kata. It's time for you to step into levels of breakthrough. Breakthrough, breakthrough. I prophesy it as I mentioned that word. The grace, the anointing is visiting you. That stumbling block leaves you now. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Angels of breakthrough. I release them across this congregation right now. In all the overflows, the thousands following us online. Breakthrough, the power of God is touching you right where you are, right now, right where you are. Breakthrough, Shaba Katala Katia, Mande Brakesi Kataya. The Lord will do a quick walk tonight, a quick walk tonight. 
He's touching you without delay, without delay. If it's your case, God visits you at once. If it's your case, God visits you at once. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. That's what I hear in my spirit. There are still others. There are still others. I see another wave of anointing coming. Breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. That's what God is bringing right now. We'll be very fast tonight. Our time is gone. I tell you, there is enough anointing for anything you want. It's going to be a fast word. The Lord told me once, I mentioned the case. His power moves. I hear delay in my spirit. Get ready. Keep playing, Mike. Be sensitive, please. The strings. Right now, everyone under the influence of the spirit of delay. Delay. Just for delay. Right now. Right now, like a string cut from you. Right now, like a string cut from you. Inside and outside. I command that spirit to leave. Delay, delay, delay. Any destiny here under the influence of delay you can't stand it you can't stand it is the anointing of the holy ghost destroying delay that embargo of delay you are caused by the god of heaven caused by the god of heaven caused by the god of heaven the spirit of delay I curse you over God's people this is a miracle service delay that has kept you down that has kept you down that has kept your family down hallelujah lift your hands everybody the Lord wants to visit families the second overflow outside I see the Lord touching men as I begin to pray right now every family under any embargo at the count of three fire falls on you now one, two, three take that fire take that fire take that fire take that fire inside, outside embargoes over families embargoes over families take that fire take that fire take that fire by the message of the god of heaven take that fire take that fire take that fire is coming on you like rain like the dew of heaven take that fire Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who this mama is. But madam, an angel of the Lord is touching you right now. As I'm speaking to you, fire is coming upon you. An angel of the Lord right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Oh God, once again confirm this call and anointing. Hallelujah. 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 I'm seeing several gates opening. Hear me. And the Lord said, this is the womb of many people. Please, I want to pray for you right now. The Lord is opening barren wombs. That's what God is showing me. Whether miscarriage or no children completely, I don't care what it is. Lift your hands for you and for your loved ones. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let the power to perform be released right now. Every barren womb for you and your loved ones. I open it right now, right now, right now, right now. 
I open every barren womb. I open every barren womb. Right now, every barren womb. Be open. Be open. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Kapatalaka. Sheketeketereposhia. Barren wombs. Be open. Barren wombs. Be open. Be open. Will you open up the gates? The gates. Open up the doors. I command every closed door over your destiny. Open up the gates. The gates. Open up the doors. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every gate and every door over my destiny be open right now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Be open. There is an anointing to open it. Every gate, every door, kaparakata, kepere shopa. Dele katu separia. Fire is burning in this place. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. I command gates. I command doors. Be open now. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every chain tying my life, stopping me from making progress. In the name of Jesus. Chains be broken. Open your mouth and pray. I break that chain. I break that chain. Kabataya. It's time to move forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost, change. Shakata bakata leke teke te, reke teke teke te be devos. Embreke te koto soto koto. Makata ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody. I want to challenge powers. I tell you, there are spirits that sit on the destinies of people. I believe that the prayer I'm about to pray for you right now will challenge this spirit. Hear me. There are men, there are women under the influence of strange spirits that's right that will stop them from advancing but right now at the count of three everywhere in all the overflows father i pray once again validate this anointing once again validate this apostolic and prophetic call at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus and i command every spirit to leave one Two, three. Right now, right now. Every power, every spirit, every power, every spirit. Out of them now. Out of their destiny now. Strange spirits. Strange spirits. Like fire. It comes upon you. The refiner's fire setting men free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Lift your hands. I tell you, I feel this thing on me right now. Ah! 
I want to pray for you. Watch this. The Lord is showing me a vision. And this is what I see. I see stones and I see fire falling on it. And the Lord says, these are the altars that have kept destinies down. Hear me. If you belong to this category, physical fire, physical fire will come on you. That devil must give way. Right now, I stand upon this apostolic call. I stand upon this prophetic call. Right now, fire, fire, fire on every devil. Fire on every spirit. Fire on every altar. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Let it burn every altar. Let it burn every altar. Release God's people. Release God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying. I see the Lord giving certain men direction. That direction will come like an anointing. You are asking God, what should I do? Where should I go? Right now, where are they, oh God? The power of God is coming on them. That's direction. You are receiving direction right now. Wherever you are, direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Confusion is ending. Direction on ministry. Direction on career. Direction on marriage. It comes to you right now. Right now. By the anointing, direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Direction is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction that we should pray in the spirit for five minutes intensely. Just do what I'm asking you to do. Something will happen to you. Go ahead. Blast in tongues for the next five minutes. Come on, pray. Rekoto shokata ba 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 ba. Mata kapa koto shokotesh. E plus kapa rata ba ba ba. Mata praka tala kate. Kapa rikete. E rekoto shobekeria. E rekoto toto kata tata tata. Kapa rata baka she. Rekete tete. Fire is burning. Rapa kata tata tata. Fire is burning. I tell you, pray in the spirit. Fire is burning. Rekete tete tete tete. Rekete koshota. Rakata makata rekete. Rekoto shop rekete. Eploko shop braski ba 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 ba. Bata braska baria na ba na na ba. Hallelujah. 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 Who is Regina? Regina. I hear a name, Regina. Regina. Fire is burning in this place. The Lord is going to do a quick walk. Quick walk. Mighty walk. No power will stand tonight. No power will stand tonight. I command every power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. You know, bad days are times when unusual requests are granted. It was during Herod's birthday that the head of a prophet went. Are we together? The best way to celebrate your birthday is to dethrone principalities. 
and powers. Every spirit represented here, I'm saying it again right now. No matter where you are hiding, I stand under this apostolic and prophetic anointing. If I be called and sent of God right now, at the count of three, on your mark, get set. Go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Pack your load. Pack your failure out of their destinies. Hallelujah. Regina. You are Regina, ma. Please come. Come on. I have to pray for you. I'm looking at you, ma. And I'm seeing the spirit of death upon you. Don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not a prophet of doom. I look at you. And I'm looking at a corpse. Like somebody that has died. I'm seeing, uh, what they call it, um, um, cotton wool in the nose and the ears as I'm looking at you physically and the Lord is saying it's time for your miracle I don't know what is wrong with you come walk to me man hold my hands right now I command that spirit your time is over right now out right now be gone now be gone right now out 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 by the power of the Holy Ghost it's time for this woman's deliverance who brought her who brought this madam what's wrong with her come talk to me oh chronic leg ulcer ah I see it here it's not healing what is it it's rotting or something is rotting is refusing to dry up that devil madam you feel pain on your legs pain on your legs you believe God will heal you a spirit just left you that's what they call leg ulcer and the reason I don't know if they diagnosed you but I'm looking at you and I'm not even seeing a woman healed of ulcer I'm seeing a woman healed of diabetes Huh? that's the cause of this thing that's why it's not here I'm not a doctor I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit is telling me this thing is diabetes and that's why this thing is not healing stand up, walk carry her up oh God help your mother now why are you watching madam, look at me in the name of Jesus Christ no, no, you don't have to lift it I bring life to these legs look at me Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Move it. Move it. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Just look at me. Move it. Go ahead. Move it. Move it. Walk. Come. Come to me. Come. Come. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Look at this. Go ahead. Lift it up. Look at this. Look at a miracle happening to her. She's still under the power of the Holy Ghost. A miracle is happening to her. In the name of Jesus, lift it up. That devil goes. I command it to dry now, not later, right now. It dries up, dries up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Your Regina. Hallelujah. There is a lady from Kogi State. Right now, I don't know where she is, but you will locate her by a shout. I sincerely don't know what I'm saying. It's under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There is bondage that has been for so long in your family. And God is saying today you are, you are set free. From Kogi State, one lady. Fire will land on her wherever she is. Whether it, where is she from? Who knows her? Where is she from? Eh? Is she from Kogi State? Bring her out. It's time for the salvation of your family. I stretch my hands on you and I challenge every altar standing against your family. They must let you go right now. Right now. Release her. I stand by an anointing and I, I challenge you. You are living right now. The Lord of Sabaoth brings judgment upon you. In the name of Jesus. 
right now by the power of the Holy Ghost release her life right now in the name of Jesus Christ 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 I don't know what God is doing with Kogi people I'm hearing Okene, 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 Okene Okene is a place in Kogi state there is a visitation coming to that territory right now people who belong from that territory an anointing is coming right now I'm not saying you should clap I'm saying you should receive right now I don't know where they are but all those from Okene I release an anointing right now by the power of the Holy Ghost inside and outside strange visitations God is bringing visitation to that territory right now if you are from that place that name is a code in the spirit it locates you wherever you are in the name of the Lord Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, everyone, stretch your hands towards me. I see something. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Stretch your hands towards me. I see something like medals being given to people. And the Lord is saying, as this medal comes, He's increasing the grace upon their lives like medals. That's what I'm saying. And the Lord said, You should stretch your hands. I release my hands back to you right now. Not everybody, but there are people wherever they are. Shatabata, teke te te te, e parakata, shaparikete. Rise, 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 rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit, rise in the spirit. Kapata tikete, e reke te 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 te, kabaratu zoporias. Hallelujah. Prayer H O D. Come and hold your hands of your assistant quickly. Come and stand, two of you. Hold your hands and lift it up. A new grace. The gifts of the Spirit is coming on both of you right now. Strange gift. The Lord is saying it's the season for you to begin to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Lift your hands. I see gifts falling on people. Gifts falling on people. Gifts, 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 gifts. Gift right now. Gift. Help them, please. Help them. Gift. There are men of God receiving gifts. Men of God. Men in ministry receiving gifts right now. I activate it. I activate it. Kapatayada. I activate it right now. Right now. Gift. Gift. The prophetic. Gift. The prophetic. Gift. The prophetic. Eyes to see, yes to hear, eyes to see, yes to hear. Kapa shakata, badi kata di kabaritos. Dera bada basi de balada balada da 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 da. Job said, "There is a part which no eye has seen." The wealth of the lion has not gotten there. Hallelujah. I'm still praying for gifts again. Because I see it. Hear me. There are many people. You don't hear me pray this prayer. But I hear word of knowledge. There are people who need to step into the revelatory gifts of the spirit. Wherever you are. I stand upon this anointing. Receive it right now. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Revelatory gifts. Ay, 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 ay. Revelatory gifts. Kapatata. 
Abarata. I stretch my hands. Step into that level. The word of knowledge. The gift of prophecy. The discerning of spirits. Hallelujah. 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 I'm looking at a vision the Lord is showing me and I'm seeing the exact color of my dress and the Lord says it's a mantle of favor. Listen, it's going to mantle people right now as I speak. Please hear me. Lift your hands. Favor. It's a mantle you can wear it like a garment father i pray there are people this is the miracle you need that mantle of favor across this building the overflow the next overflow online right now on everyone everyone under the sound of my voice may mantles of favor come upon you right now mantles of favor come upon you right now Lord on everyone let no one be left let no one be left wear it like a garment wear it like a garment wear it like a garment let it open strange doors for you hallelujah hallelujah our time is gone we have to be fast my goodness Now listen, before we pray for the sick, there's no time to just pray and ask them to come. And so we pray for the sick. But before we do that, if you have your prayer request, lift it up. This is very strange what the Lord shows me. Usually we bring it out and lay it here. But the Lord is asking, please, if it's in a phone, Maybe your loved ones wrote it, leave the phone up. It's not, we're not playing games. Please, please, don't come and waste your time. There is a God that answers prayers. My dear, come. You are Regina. I have to pray for you. Because the Lord is telling me that he wants to end captivity in your family. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a lot of suffering and pain in your family. And the Lord is asking that I pray for you number one number two for you the lord is saying i should tell you it stops i don't know what is that but the lord is saying it stops from today it stops hold my hands father bring your word to pass in the life of this lady right now in the name of jesus over your family i command that that pain that captivity comes to an end and for you the prophecy is that it stops i don't know what it is but i stop it right now right now right now right now Right now, it stops. Kaba shiba ratusia. Ende la rusa pras kubarita shubriata baladaba. Those online, I know that there are hundreds of prayer requests. No problem. The media department is stretching it by faith. Those outside, don't worry, you will lift it before we submit it. If there's something you should write and you've not written, you will quickly write it before we pray. But the Lord is just asking me to lift it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray on it. And the Lord says for us to hold it and just pray in tongues for just a minute. 
seriously and violently on your request are we together in one minute just speak over it are you not the God that answers prayers Lord when you speak it may look foolish when you speak it may look foolish but we choose to be foolish in obedience to your word pray answers are falling answers are falling from heaven just in one minute Shabakata da 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 Answers are falling. Answers are falling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please lift it up. Lift it up. I want to speak over it. The Lord is going to open the eyes of many people here as I pray. And you will see the requests on fire. Physically. At least I see seven people having this experience. Physically, you will see fire. I'm not saying physical fire. I'm saying when the Lord opens your eyes, you will see it as though burning. That's what is going to happen. Father, you have given an instruction. We are foolish enough to obey you. Right now, upon this request... The fire that brings performance. The fire that brings answers. Let it begin to follow God. On prayer requests right now. Let the fire that brings answers. Fall on them. Turning the requests into testimonies turning the request there's authority in this place turning the request into testimonies hallelujah now begin to forward them to the ushers please ushers quickly start collecting them while they are doing that please be careful with those in front some of them are under the anointing so don't match them you are here trusting God for healing. Specifically, I want to lay my hands on you now. Make your way to the front. You came with a sick person. It's time to bring them to the front very quickly. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. I like you to believe the Lord. There is healing in your name. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Let your faith be alive. The power of God is already touching people. It's flowing. me please listen i don't care what the name of that sickness is you must refuse and insist that plus your hair falling you must be healed are you hearing don't say this one is not serious uh -uh. when you are coming here insist and say lord from my head to my toe i must be healed as we minister to you by the power of the holy ghost the anointing is already touching people. Some of you, we may not even need to come close to you. It's the power of God. While that is happening, I want everybody in the congregation, we are going to maintain an attitude of prayer. No carelessness and gisting around. Begin to speak to God concerning your prayer request. There are so many people who are proud to tell you this is a place of healing. In every city and in every territory, God must find a place where he can extend his healing power to his people. The Lord is showing me all kinds of infirmities. HIV, 
diabetes, tumor, breast lump, breast lump, a lot of breast lump. The Lord is going to heal you. Hallelujah. And Jimmy, please come. We're going to pray. Listen, there is the anointing upon him. Come, Jimmy. There's fire upon my hands, and I want you to touch that anointing. Go ahead. That anointing. That's what the Lord says. I should tell you to touch my hands and touch that healing anointing, that healing power. Miracle worker. Ah, you are the miracle worker. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Come and do a miracle. A miracle today. Father, please heal everyone here everyone and for those you are standing for you have the photos of any everyone don't worry while we are coming just show the photos whether it's phone or whatever we will lay hands on it believe god please no commotion as we pray for you just gently walk to your seat because of time we don't take instant testimonies please forgive us but make sure you are praying don't just stand looking at others carelessly let your hearts be open thank you jesus go ahead help us You made a way. Stretch your hands towards the prayer requests and begin to speak over them. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Those, those being prayed for, don't worry. Just focus. We're praying for you. But everyone, pray on the request. Out! Right now. Stretch your hands on the request and pray. I command the spirit of death to leave you right now. Please stretch your hands. Make sure you are talking to the Lord. We are not just whiling away time. You can move the mountains. Prophesy and say, Lord, you will visit me. You will visit my request. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save.
greater, is stronger, is higher than any other. His awesoming power and power. Our time is gone. Thank you for your patience. It's called a miracle service. Please stretch your hands here. Those still on the healing lines, don't worry. Jimmy will handle you. Please stretch your hands. Let's save time very quickly. Prophesy, we're not wasting time, please. I want you to understand the nature of the service and what we're doing. Outside in any of the overflows, just stretch your hands. And let's trust the God that heals. Go ahead and pray. Shabarako subredika shabriada. Are you praying? Prophesy. Lord, we declare the miracle walking power of Jesus. The miracle walking power of Jesus. The miracle walking power of Jesus. Shaprakato suprende sharapa kuratia. Go ahead and prophesy. Lord, I declare that these requests are turned to testimonies in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus we declare we declare we have brought them before the altar they will never return to your life you have handed it before the altar it will never return to your life you've handed it before the altar of God it will never return to your life Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to do three things very quickly. Very, very quickly. I'm going to speak over our lives right now. Immediately after that, we'll take the altar call. Our time is gone, but even if it's two minutes, we have to give people who are making commitments for the Lord. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, everybody, and receive the final prophecy. These prophecies are powerful. That's why you hear people returning back with testimonies. The prophetic words change lives. In my opinion, you've heard me say it again and again. I believe this is the most powerful part of the miracle service. Not everyone may come out here. Not everyone may fall under the anointing, but the prophecy can come upon everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. These Egyptians that you see over your life, over your destiny, I declare that by this miracle service, you see them no more forever. I declare that you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus. Everything that has delayed you, the level you are supposed to have been, I don't know what that level is, but I don't know what stopped you from getting to that level right now between now and next miracle service run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced run with a dimension of speed you have never experienced I pray for the works of your hands that has refused to grow in the name of Jesus I declare the month of June and July months of supernatural increase. That which is upon your hand is compelled to grow in the name of Jesus Christ. The kind of favor you have not seen from beginning of this year to this mid-year, I command in the name of Jesus, you will experience it. You will experience it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Revive now thy walk in the midst of the year. In the midst of the year. It says revive now thy walk. I don't know what has gone cold in your life. Maybe your prayer life. Maybe your word life. But by the mercies of the God of heaven I pray. Let there be revival for you right now. Supernatural revival for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before danger shows up in your life, may God give you the eyes to see. Before 
men conspire against you may God open your eyes to see hallelujah where men have said you can never get to the embargo they have put on your destiny I tear it out of your life in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for every student here that unction that anointing that gives men capacity to be extraordinary I command it to fall upon you right now I command it to fall upon you right now for all final year students there is a finisher's anointing the grace that grants men access to finish in the name of Jesus as you push this one last time may the heavens push with you may the heavens push with you in the name of Jesus Christ every disfavor every bad luck everything that does not represent the aura of favor in your life I drive it far from your life in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus whatever makes money run away from your hand whatever makes it to change direction when it's almost getting to you I command that spirit to live your life forever I release abundance of financial supplies to you. abundance of financial supplies the spirit of fear that has stopped you from rising up and doing big things in the name of Jesus as this month comes to an end it drives that spirit out of your life I will always pray this prayer for you I call again the helpers of your destiny I don't know how to make you believe the power of this prayer but in the name of Jesus may they appear in your life hallelujah I want to pray a special prayer for you one of the blessings that God has given me in my life is unusual access God has given me strange dimensions of access access to men of influence access to men of authority I pray for you in this season whatever will connect you to men of influence not just men who can help you but men who have the ability to help you may that connection happen in the name of Jesus may that connection happen in the name of Jesus everything that has died in your hands I don't care for how long in the name of Jesus I command resurrection upon it I pray for you the resources you have in your hand grace comes upon it to multiply grace comes upon it to multiply grace comes upon it to multiply in the name of Jesus the presence of God that has distinguished men in this ministry may that supernatural glory that presence may that aura go with you everywhere you go whoever has said no to you I change their statements in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ finally I pray for your spiritual hunger what good is it if you get money you get all of these things and with it you lose your passion that whatever you lose in life may your passion for God not be one of them in the name of Jesus Christ everything you submitted here as a prayer request we turn it to your testimony we turn it to your testimony we turn it to your testimony in this period of my birthday as the Lord blesses me I pray that he will bless you too believe me I'm praying for you from my heart that whatever God does for me by his mercies the mercies of the God of David may he do it for you as God lifts me may he lift you as God wipes my tears may he wipe your tears in the name of Jesus Christ the next time 
We are looking for men to stand and testify genuinely in the name of Jesus. May your testimonies be so heavy you cannot sit back there. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone called barren, go and return with your miracle children. Everyone called jobless, go and return with a miracle job. Everyone due for promotion. You had the testimony of prof. In the name of Jesus, may the God that lifts men promote you. Promote your loved ones. Promote you and your loved ones. In the name of Jesus. May you wake up in the morning and return back with miracles that will bring tears in your eyes. While you are sleeping, may God wake somebody to be wondering what to bless you with. Ay, 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 ay. Our time is gone, but receive this. I say it again, that while you are sleeping, may somebody else stay awake wondering how to bless you. Every gift you have but there is no platform to give it expression so that it will bless you there are many of us who have potentials but those who need it that access to them is far I connect you to those who need your gift I connect you to those who have the grace to celebrate you in the name of the Lord Jesus Hallelujah. While others are walking, may you fly by the wings of the Spirit. May you fly by the wings of the Spirit. Don't doubt the prayer I'm praying for you. Don't let the devil make you think he's just talking. I'm not just talking. I say it again. While men are walking, may the Lord give you wings with which you will fly. Every family represented here, not just as individuals, as a family, return with your testimony. What you have been praying for to happen in your family, I declare that between now and the end of June, may you begin to record testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Two minutes very quickly. You're surrendering your all and your heart to Jesus. Please keep standing. No movement around. There are two sets of people I want to invite here quickly. Those who are saying, man of God, I love the Lord, but I need his help in my life. And those who are saying, I have never even made that commitment. Please, let's rise as we honor them. They need to be encouraged. I know there are people like that. We don't want to cajole you. God has spoken to your heart already. Outside and in any of the overflows, make your way to the front right now. Please, we have one minute for this. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for the first person. God bless you. Run out. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to you and he's saying, make your ways right. Make your ways right. It doesn't matter what you have done. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.